No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. I'm in here with the rainwater. And you just said, I wish Wack was here. I wish Wack was here. And so I didn't realize until this morning, as I was like continuing to sort of go deeper and deeper down the rainwater wormhole on YouTube, I didn't realize you guys had issues. Yeah. He's supposed to be that the next episode after this. He's supposed to be here in like an hour or two. Wrangle. So I already texted security uh-huh. and I was like, yo, I don't think if they run into each other, it's going to be any like crazy shit, but we should definitely keep an eye on the situation. Okay. So I don't know, like, just just so you know, that is a possibility that we could get you guys having a conversation in here. I'm sure he would love it. Man, that would be, that'll be some legendary <laughs> It's going to be five hours. Because <laughs> we did a lot of arguing on Snapchat. I mean, not Snapchat, Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He made the ratings go up, you know. I bought a car off his ratings going up. Really? Yeah, outside streamed up. But, but, but you know, they're outside. You know, they went. They wouldn't go. So explain that situation to me. Is this how you guys first had issues with each other? Yeah, because I'm at the Grammys or the Billboard Awards. They called me. They say, Wack want to talk to you. So I'm like, okay. So I get on, the, I get on Clubhouse. He like, tell them rain, water. Tell them rain that my song outside with Mo3 is the reason why Mo3 outside did numbers. Somebody said, like, nah. He thought Blueface version did better than Mo3 version. Mm-hmm. That wasn't the case. So he was just talking out his ass? Man, he was talking, but he, he can convince anybody anytime <laughs> we get to talk. When he get to talk, he can convince anybody. <laughs> See, right now, I was, I was double platinum. Yeah. I think they was gold. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he has a way about him where yeah, he'll yeah, sort yeah. of start just yeah. really just talking over you to the point where it doesn't really matter if you're factually correct. <laughs> it's something I deal with a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I spend plenty, plenty of nights twisting and turning and thinking about whack. Right. Oh, yeah. What's that like, though? Like, those late clubhouse nights. Like, I never really got into that, that Man, way of life. Whack can say one word and have a hundred people be totally against you. Mm. He can completely make up anything and have a hundred people totally against you. And they, they'll just tarnish your name, tarnish your name, tarnish your name. That's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy that I don't interact with that part of his life because I just don't ever do the clubhouse thing. I just talk to him on here and then read the comments. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> want the comments like they have against you. <laughs> I think they like the dynamic with me and him because I'm kind of more like I I seem really normal and like there's like a regular guy compared to him and then he's just like hitting me with the craziest shit and I got to figure out how to deal with it. <laughs> and then I hit him with a lot of crazy shit too. <laughs> now you do a lot of crazy shit. Yeah. You do a lot of crazy shit. I'm, I'm going to get this out the way, okay? Okay. I don't know how you do it. Hmm. Right? I don't know how you do it with the whole wife situation. <laughs> see, listen. We got the flashlight yeah, right the, there. You want to you hit the bathroom? No, nah, nah, no. Listen, okay. I'm tender dick. You T- hear me? Tender dick? Man, you better not even like my 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 girlfriend <laughs> picture. You hear me? I ain't, I ain't nothing. I, I, listen, I ain't nothing about no keeping it pee or nothing like that. I don't know how you do it. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm living on that edge. Everybody give a hand clap to uh, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how you do it, man. Listen, yeah, I don't know how you do it. I think I was built different. You are? Yeah. You don't give a I'm viral on a different level. Yeah, yeah. It mean, that means more than anything. <laughs> yeah, you're Just right. being able to make the headlines. Yeah, you're right. I understand nah, that. <laughs> we're just having a good time. Just getting yeah. a little freaky for the people out there. <laughs> yeah. You ain't on a freak shit? Nah, hell no. No, no. I grew up running trains on women. How's that going? No, that was my, in high school, I was a, I, I was a train man. You had to hang that up at some point? I started catching feelings. <laughs> like, what number <laughs> would you typically go? Would you be like fighting to get to the front of the line? Oh, yeah, I got to go first. Really? Man, because at least I had some big nasty. I don't nasty, know. I had some big nasty. Around me, they ain't they ain't wash their ass. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And them girls don't get. If a girl let a train get ran through her, she don't give a damn what the balls smell like or nothing. Yeah, in the streets, I totally agree. In the, yeah, I would argue it's a little yeah. different. Yeah, but in general, in real life, it's usually a pretty wild scenario. Yeah, yeah. In the south, they don't give a fuck. We used to find girls off Craigslist who were down with that. Craigslist? Yeah. Man, I was a back page uh, uh, individual. Yeah, I never got into that. And a chat line. Really? What were you going to chat line to make your do- your voice deep? <laughs> <laughs> make you seem like a totally different person. How many times do you think you paid for on the back page? Nah, I wasn't the one paying What were you doing? Mm-mm. Selling it? No, 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 no. no. girls on there? I sell a dream and make them think. I, make, I sell a dream to a girl on back page. Yeah. What kind of dream? You make her, you get the, the requirements for free. Yeah, I get the requirement for free because a, a woman on Backpage had low self-esteem. So really? you just tell them what they want to hear. 
girl, you still over there with this dude? Come on, man. We, I, I'm going to put you on music videos. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Being able to riz up a dude online is pretty crazy. Right. Then, listen, <laughs> when, when I was broke, <laughs> when I was broke in 2013, listen, I used to get counterfeit $100 bills. Mm-hmm. And I would get my, I would get my jacked off 10 times a day for what? $40. And I make, I make them give me change. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so so I have a thousand dollars worth of uh, fake hundred dollar bills. I go in there, get forty dollars. They give me sixty back. I leave the day for six hundred dollars. Ten hand jobs a day. Man, I was a beast. What the <laughs> f- <laughs> I never heard something like that. <laughs> I was a beast. Listen, down south. <laughs> we had nothing else to do. <laughs> it was hot outside. You had nothing else to do. It was so hot you outside. get ten hand. The day while while uh, laundering counterfeit money. That was my job. At a sixty percent exchange rate. Yeah, that was my job. Forty percent interest. That was my, that was my job. But so you're investing it back into the Asian hand community, I guess. Right. That was my job. No, 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 no. I was going. They weren't Asian. Um, back page. Oh right. right. That was dumb black women. <laughs> <laughs> that, I can't say that. that. That never looked at the uh, at the hundred dollar bills. What the? F- so it was all black women giving hand jobs on on back page. Yes. What the? F- the whole world out there, I don't know about. Oh my god, this is common sh- in have, Dallas. Or? Have you ever peed after getting ten black uh, hand jobs? Oh, it hurts so bad. <laughs> <laughs> hurts Honestly, so bad. no. I've kind of the, the hand <laughs> thing kind of went the way of the dodo for me. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. at a certain point you move on to the top, you move on to the vagina, perhaps even the butt. I mean, that's, that's more my style. Yeah, yeah, I see. I but there's, there's there's a fine art to the hand, especially if they start spitting on it and. Sh- Create all kinds no, of No, you can't have spit on her when you go to a back page woman. What? You better not put no spit on it. Listen. <laughs> listen. Listen. I'm about some lube. <laughs> yeah, nah, I can't do it. Listen, I've come from the, I came from the pen, the jailhouse in Dallas. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I like my dry. Dry. Yeah. Mmm. I guess. Oh, well, you're but no, <laughs> now you're talking about the dry hand job. Yeah, dry hand job. Not dry. Yeah, right, dry okay. hand job. Dry and I mean, I feel like you're more likely to in, in, encounter like chafing. Yeah, you ever beat the <laughs> so the it bleeds? Getting Ugh. ten hand jobs a day, you got to have some chafing, some blood. Hell no, no. Oh yeah, yeah, no. With the little cut, oh yeah, that hurts. You ever used to do coke? <laughs> nah, nah, hell no. Nah. Off the coke for sure. I've gotten like an abrasion on my <laughs> from the chick for so long. <laughs> it's just, Adam, you just the, life. You the whole, you the whole star. Oh, I used to be on some different. <laughs> Before you did this. Well, I was for free, like way too much. Yeah. I remember I, I got a girlfriend, uh-huh. and then she she went out of town for a week, and, and she came back, and we took ecstasy together. And then after we had sex, she, she went through my phone, and she found uh, evidence of me, like a different girl every day that she was gone, throughout the whole week that she was gone. Uh-huh. And she smashed my phone, and that was pretty much the that end of that. That's my type of yeah. I just fell in love with a girl on OnlyFans. Really? I met her like three months ago. After two weeks, I fell in love with her. You hear me? The nastiest you gonna ever meet. You hear me? And sexy, right? I even I even helped her get a house, everything, until I went through her phone and realized this girl do for a living. Really? I man, so I asked her for my money back. <laughs> Listen, now, Adam, Adam, I asked for my money back because you forgot I'm Tinder Dick. I found out she was somebody else, oh, and, she, sure. and she was recording it off her phone. Uh. So I asked her for my money back. She didn't get my money back. So I called the housing from the rent the rental house she was using, mm-hmm. and I said, I want to let y'all know this girl is using a CPN, and it's and she's living under the CPN. What is a CPN? It's just a fake identification that people use down south. Okay. Police came, took her to jail. She had to move out the house. All she had to do was get my money back, Adam. Mm. You don't think that that is snitching? Yeah, I don't give a damn. Don't trust no OnlyFans. Because <laughs> what she did, it took my money and go f- somebody else. That's aggravated, uh, that's aggravated robbery. But that sounds like it's kind of like a whole different level because she's, she's kind of doing like a, it's almost like identity fraud. Yeah, that's what it was. She's like. Or, or the lover boy method, but yeah. it's the opposite. It's the lover girl method, yeah. where you like act like you're in love with the girl in order to like get them to f- basically like be under your control. Like I feel like a girl doing that is kind of like a different thing. That's aggravated robbery. Yeah, that's aggravated robbery. <laughs> that's crazy. I would have thought that you were like a married man, all settled down and everything. No, not this business. We got no man. Ain't no woman go marry somebody in this business. Really? 
I mean, you'll be out. If a if a woman married of someone in this business right now, she only around for your money. Mm. You catching flights every night, every every week, going this place, this place, this place in the club every night. Ain't no real woman go settle for this. Because okay, I'm gonna be real with you. When I listen to Rainwater just straight elaborate about the hustle, I get very motivated. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I really like about your interviews like that is that you're just really prophesizing about the hustle and being outside. And like when you're talking about why you like Big X the plug, you're just like, he's outside. He's at the after hours. He's mingling with the people. And I like that because from my perspective, I suck at that for the last few years. And primarily because through making this kind of content, I get to just sit here and reach a huge fucking audience. And I take it for granted yeah. that I don't have to, Jump on a plane and go to Dallas and yeah. touch the strip clubs in Dallas and go to Atlanta and be around all these guys and everything like that. And I realized, though, that at the end of the day, in the rap game, your relationships are kind of everything. You and go. you got to you gotta touch the soil. I'm going to leave here, go to San Francisco, to the Empire Christmas party, leave there tonight. I'm going to leave there tonight, mm -hmm. go to Vegas, and go back to Dallas. Vegas? What are you doing in Vegas? Uh, I'm getting ready for Super Bowl. Oh, okay. People forgot about Super Bowl. I don't even know that that happening until like the day before why don't you go from city to city and do a live podcast and charge forty dollars to get in uh, we've we've done that uh it's all right what do you think about big x he's tight he's obese <laughs> but he's, he's a good rapper <laughs> he's a good rapper yeah do you remember the day when mo3 was here at the other building Okay, so that's what I was going to ask. Were you there that day? Yeah, okay. Th then Dolph and Kegel, I came. Yes, and I, I always tell people about that memory because after Mo3 got done his interview, and Mo3's already pretty big at that point, yeah. but he was a huge Dolph fan, and I mentioned to him that Dolph was about to come exactly. in and do the interview next, and Dolph and Kegel were running late. Uh, but then, so so uh, Mo3 just stuck around and was like pretty hyped to take a picture with him. And, shit. and so it was kind of tight to see him on more of like a fan level because he was just such a Dolph fan that he was just yeah, really... Yeah, nobody knew that, but you, I, was, I, always, I always wondered that you remembered it. I think we stayed an extra 40 minutes yeah, yeah. and Dolph pulled up in the back. He was like, there he the f out. He was, he was. And then you fast forward like two years and they're both gone. I know. It's fucking terrible. It's the streets. <laughs> you know, they blame Empire, but they're stupid. It's so crazy. I mean, Empire, if anything, they just take, a, take their chances or they, their business model incorporates a lot of... Dudes Underdogs. who are high risk, right. let's say. Right, right. Because nobody else would take a risk on Mo3. You could do the same thing with me. You could, you could post a picture of me with like 50 rappers who died. Those are the, the dudes that I interview oftentimes are the ones who are kind of out there taking risks. Damn. So let's Alex. be real. <laughs> right. Same with you. If you if you manage 100 artists during your career, I mean, from what I've seen from you so far, they tend to be more street artists. So No, nah, I'm done with this. You're over that. I say that every time, but you know, uh, like I told, uh, uh, man, it's, you know, uh, I rode around with uh, Charles and the wife for a little bit, and it, it me for a year. How long was that? Yo, 2022. Why'd you roll around with him? I thought he was a good person. I thought he could help me get good with the community. Okay. And you know, uh, we went, we kicked it for a minute. You know, we went everywhere around the world, and then uh, I was there when he was a soldier boy. Then we went to Rolling where he, Loud. Where he maced him. He maced him. Then I went to Rolling Loud. Then I went to went over there with Dirk, with him. And um, I started realizing that nobody get on Mo3 album for free uh -huh. because of Charleston White. Uh -huh. So I kind of cut, try to cut ties with him. That's how I met Mama Duck. Mama Duck came to my house. You know, I tried to cut ties with him, but then everywhere I went, everybody was like, we're Charleston it. We're Charleston it. We're Charleston it. So I called Dubair. I said, say, tell that don't don't mention no Mo three. Or oh, I'm I'm gonna end his whole career. Three days later, Mo three. This that that. Let the whole world know he ain't with me. Now everybody start calling my phone, getting no Mo three album for free. Really? Yeah. What the? F I control him. Because Charleston White is kind of like the Donald Trump of hip hop, <laughs> where he's like so controversial, people cannot look away from him. But at the same time, a large percentage of the stuff that is coming out of his mouth from time to time is very offensive and no, way a, over the line. He's a nerd. Right. He's a nerd that finally got attention. Right. You see him throwing the flowers, shut your bitch, like an angry nerd. But the thing about Charleston White is that when he was young, he wouldn't have been able to mo like monetize his personality. Why? But the 
it is the world that we live in now where being able to do a say cheese interview is going to get you, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars if you're him. And then you can go do interviews with all these other smaller platforms or whatever. He's like really easily monetizing the fact that he's good at just coming up with takes about shit off mm-hmm. the top of his head, even though he's probably not professional enough to exist in a fucking ESPN office or yeah. like do sports center or every, something more professional. Like, every time he get on a high platform, he f- himself. Mm. We get a lot of big attention. Like the Aiden, man, that was a perfect thing for him. Stuff. Then he went on tour with the TK Kirkland. Stuff. Like he go mm. all the time. He's not used to the attention. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, what do you blame that for? You think he's just fucked up, or is it because he's like a hood? No, dude? it's like a nerd that finally got the attention in the classroom. Mm. Have you ever seen a nerd and the teacher say, "Okay, you're my assistant," and they just, oh, he was talking, he was talking, he's not working. They they finally got the attention that he needed, and what he did was it was so perfect. He used the police to keep everybody from whooping his ass. So by saying that he would snitch, that he keep everybody stops off. a lot of the real gangster dudes from Listen, even thinking about it. He got beat right? up twice this month. <laughs> this month, I thought it was just the one time. No, 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 in the barbature. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They came there and whooped his ass. So he's really a target yeah. like that? Yeah, now he is because now they know he can get touched. Mm. See, at first they left him alone. But Charles would to walk past somebody and they'd be like, oh, I'm going to leave him alone. He'll call the police. Mm. But not knowing in, in Texas, the police want, is really trying to take him to jail. They don't with him? No, they're trying to take him to jail. Why? He shot himself first of all Oh yeah. inside the club. Then two weeks later, he went back to the club, fell asleep at the light, drunk. Mm. They took him to jail. And, you know, like... Um, growing before he started the internet, he was talking t- about every police officer, white police officer, he won't dead. So nobody know that. So then when he got the attention to keep him off his ass, he acted like he was on the police side. They don't like him. Mm. I went to, like going to high schools, we, we started going to high schools, me and Sean Cobb was going to high schools with him. We went to one middle school. After we left the middle school, the parents were calling. Don't let him up there no more. Little girl's daddies were calling, calling, calling. Then they finally said he's not a, no longer allowed in Fort Worth school districts. Did he do anything at the school, or was it just because of his past comments? Past comments and 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 the things that he do. Like he's like I said, he's a nerd, nerd. So he never ever, he never ever got the attention he wants. So you know, he you know in the hallways interacting with the kids. Come on, man, you're a grown man. Right. Because I remember realizing how bad it was for him when academics booked a live show with him in New York City. And I'm pretty sure it sold out instantly, Mm -hmm. which says a lot about his star power. But then pretty quickly, uh, his comments about Asian women, like China Mac, pushed those comments to the surface and told people on his Instagram story to contact the venue and stuff. And boom, uh, the show's canceled. He's basically like blacklisted from doing anything with like yeah. these big professional booking agencies, I believe. Yeah, but y'all make y'all created this monster. The world created this monster. For the record, I tried to interview him, and his his commentary was basically like, "I don't like white boys who love black dudes about me." <laughs> He's like, "That's not my kind of white boy," <laughs> which I thought was f-ing hilarious. He's like, "I like my white boys a little racist, something like that." And I was like, "Well, I mean, I guess I'll take it." Do people like, call you the police? A little bit here and there, you know. Why? Wow. Because I'll just like ask the craziest question ever, just to like some shit that I know the dude is not going to answer, and then they won't answer, but it'll be like a funny moment where we're both kind of like laughing about it and shit like that. And then people try to like act as if I thought this dude was really going to tell me, you know, I'll be like, "So you really put a hit on so and so?" And it's it's just funny because it's like if if it's already like out there, like people already have like mentioned this kind of thing or whatever, it, they're obviously not going to answer seriously. They're just going to laugh and it's going to be like a moment. Have you ever asked somebody that? I don't think I've actually asked that, but like uh, along those lines, uh, that kind of. Now we talk about hits. What you think? What you, why you what you why you didn't add get down to the nitty gritty with half pint? With half pint? Wow, yeah. what was the nitty gritty? You know, you you spoke on the yellow situation a little bit. Then okay. you switched to me. You know. How you feel about Rainwater and Trap Boy? Uh-huh. And then he, like, he kind of avoided the situation. Oh, he avoided talking about you? Uh-huh. He, yeah, he avoided talking about me. Why? You guys got issues? Nah, we ain't got no issues. I'm you know? out of the loop. I don't know about the Dallas I, deep-seated uh, drama. I just try to, man, listen. I just try to eliminate all the negative situations. Uh-huh. You know. So half-pints a negative situation? Uh, He creates negative situations. You know, one thing he did was 
He went from one person beefing. You remember, do you know who Goyayo is? Oh, yeah. He went from Goyayo beefing with this person to this person, shot this man video, then go back and shoot this man video. If they diss him, he go back and shoot this man a video. And it make the whole city into a roar. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So right But now, somebody was going to shoot those music videos, yeah, right? I understand that, but don't be the one because at the end of the day, he came on this and said Dallas music scene is dead right now. And he made a big concern about Dallas. He said that on yeah, the jumper, right? Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, um, only reason people feel like the Dallas rap scene is dead right now because it's no more killing. I mean, a lot of cities in America, there's like a correlation between the amount of attention to the music and the level of violence that's going on between people in the music and like their associated gangs. So Let's you, be real. So you with me though? So listen, that's the reason why he says the music dead. But every city that's hot right now, they're killing each other. Mm. If, if 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 somebody from O Block get killed tomorrow, and um, the 63rd people starts repping it, Chicago is back to number one. Mm-hmm. Baton Rouge, they only got hot because people was dying. Mm. Memphis, people was dying. Miami don't have no rappers because no one's dying. It's crazy. L.A. don't have no rappers because nobody was dying. But you take it back to 20 years ago, it was hot. Whereas we're all talking about a random ass city like Jacksonville just because there's a bunch of crazy ass violence Ex- associated exactly. with it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So you know that's the that's the time of the, that's the time. So 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 when people get to dying, it brings money to hip hop to their city. It's an ugly way of thinking about it, but I guess you're it's right. It's the truth. Yeah. We live in an evil as uh, business. So are you saying that Half Pine Films is like basically encouraging this for his own benefit, or do you uh, think he's just yeah, 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 yeah. saying what's real? I mean, he's encouraging for his own benefit because if if three people die tomorrow, he has to do some some rap, then they are excited about the hip hop from Dallas now. Right, they're going to go film this video. They're going to film this video now. The world is saying the world is saying that you you were looking into it, uh, or they beefing in Dallas. So and so got shot. Right, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, I mean you know. You know, uh, it's all it's for their own benefits, but you know, uh, other people don't give the small people a chance, and the people who's not beefing a chance. One thing I do like about Big X, Big X not beefing with nobody. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Big X not beefing with nobody. So for a person to sit there and say the music scene in Dallas is dead, we got, we got a, we have a star. Right. You know, until I get active. You talking about Tony Wilrich? Hell nah. <laughs> That's a star. No, you killed you killed his career. Listen, <laughs> ladies like that, and gentlemen, right? if you from Fort Worth, Texas, <laughs> yo, had pain. Why you ain't, why you ain't gonna shoot no video for Tony? <laughs> That's your style. Listen, everybody, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, from Dallas, Texas. I mean, Fort Worth, Texas. Adam fucked up Tony's career. Elaborate. Explain how that worked. You brought real crips to the platform, <laughs> and Tony didn't know what the fuck to say and what the fuck to do. Right. He didn't know the background of being a crip at all. That really exposed him. Oh, my But you've God. been watching it for a while. He wasn't really, like, focused on pushing this gangster image for a long time, right? It was his manager. Oh, really? The same dude who was managing Go Yayo when, Yo, when Mo3 and Go Yayo got into it. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean... It became pretty obvious pretty quick that his cripping was and his knowledge of the streets and stuff was pretty limited. And as a result, people slowly started to realize, like, oh, this is just kind of like a regular gay guy. Now, he's funny as fuck, but let's be real. The average, like, hip-hop consumer is probably not dying to watch just, like, a random gay dude. They were they were tuned in for the idea of a gay crip. Man, you ruined him. <laughs> After he left, he went to the internet and said, I am no longer cripping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why? And I sit there and ask the, ask the people, his manager, why would you put him on in front of Adam? I wasn't even there, for the record. It was Brick Baby and Crip Mac. Oh, uh, but then he came to you one time too. And then we did one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, I mean, you know, he got those are his glasses class. right there. Oh, you right. kept his glasses, the well, orange he, ones. He gave them to us as a souvenir. Yeah, it's part of. We're, I'm starting like a No Jumper History uh, Museum of like all just random objects from people like. Uh, we interviewed a Chicago rapper named Lil Marcus last night, and he left a bag of shake. I think I'm going to put that in the museum. It's just like some, some, <laughs> oh, you, got, you get an award? The, uh, the, uh, yeah, Jason Lee gave me the Mandingo of the Year Award. Mandingo Hall of Fame. And you got some whoops? Oh, that's a badass uh, yeah. uh, trophy. Case. You fucking with the whoops? I ain't never tasted them. Yeah. I had to get on. I did a Sean Cotton podcast yesterday, and they kept saying, whoop this, whoop that, whoop this. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you don't like it? Huh? They they just shit. The thing about somebody like Jay Main is that if you're gonna like come up off a catchphrase, 
you kind of always got to be working for that next catchphrase and yeah, like the next viral skit. Like you look at Drewski, that's the goat of like making skits right. and doing comedy coming up online because he's not only been hot, he's been hot as fuck for like three years. And like every time he comes out with a skit, that shit will get hundreds of thousands of likes on Twitter, go viral on every fucking page. I think Jay Main needs to think of himself more like a comedian, more like a Drewski, and he needs to be in the lab writing jokes and like working on material. I think and shit. is he rapping? Yeah, I think that's probably a waste yeah, of time. Yeah, go kill him. Yes. Th- this podcast took over rapping. You more famous than some of the rappers. I bet you get more views than some of these rappers. <sighs> True. But sometimes, like, you know, yesterday, did you see the storyline about the guy who was the top spender on Ruby Rose's OnlyFans? Uh-huh. He spent $62,000. So I interviewed him, and he revealed that that was all cap. It was all like an OnlyFans marketing stunt, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, there's one YouTuber, this guy named Moist Critical, and he made a video reacting to my video. My video has 100,000 views. His video has 2 million views on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So it is kind of weird, though, sometimes as, as a YouTube content creator, it's different than the music. With the music, every time it gets played, you get paid. As a podcaster, nowadays, you have these crazy moments, and they kind of just get aggregated onto a million different pages, which is cool from like a fame perspective. Right. But it does feel a little weird. Now, truck drivers, they look at the whole podcast. Yeah, true. But that's why it, if you really want to like – kill it and make your podcast indispensable you kind of need to have like really high quality long yeah content because yeah. you can't put an hour-long podcast yeah. on tiktok right you know right but it's crazy how competitive that world is and how hard we all go now with the titles and the thumbnails and everything to make shit as appetizing as possible to the people whereas when i think about it back in the day we used to just push it out and that was it <laughs> we didn't put the title so you making my money now yeah, but it's way more work and way more of a challenge, I would say now, because uh, the market is so flooded. Now you a star now. You most star, you got most star power than rappers. The question is, what do you do with that star power? Because I'm listening to you talk about booking shows and how as a rapper you need to be doing this, this, and this to just get every last dollar. And I'm kind of like, fuck, man, maybe I need to just really be in the field. At least I'm, at least I'm, uh, I'm an animal at making money. So I, I flew down here for free, right? Okay. And uh, shout out to Teddy T. Teddy T go be the number one star in the world. Y'all got to take out Teddy T. He's up coming. Boom. So this is what I'm I did. And this is what I did. Uh, uh, I charged everybody five hundred dollars to uh, shout him out on here. I got about six more names to do. Oh. T T O D Bumper Johnson, man. I, I see you out there working. You know what I'm saying? So, That's how you monetize. Yeah, so, Ooh, I like it. So you know everything I do I equals it equals a dollar. You see Mac was the king of that. He would come on with a bunch of plates of food and he'd be <laughs> shouting out all these like home yeah, chefs yeah. that delivered to yeah. your door and shit. I'm like, why wow, you got this big pile of food? It's starting to stink. You had it sitting in the car for hours. <laughs> yeah. So oh, man. everything, everything is equal. So you see what I'm saying? So uh, you, you, I use you as a leverage. I'm going to go to uh, Empire Christian Party. Uh-huh. And we just, you know, we, we, uh, this marketing, this was a whole business marketing trip to uh, promote Mo3 album. Okay. And so, yeah, man. So is the posthumous Mo3 album arc of your life Coming to a close soon. I feel like he's, he's got to run out of music at some point, right? Fuck no, he did. He got about two more albums to go. Really? Yeah. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. And these and these do well financially. They make a lot of money. Yeah, he do. Yeah, yeah. He uh, his music still because people didn't really just tune into him to after he died. Mm, there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. And let me tell you this: since he died, out of King Von, out of um, Nipsey Hustle. No, 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 Nipsey Hustle. Pop Smoke. You know. It's King Von, then Mo3, then Nipsey, then Pop Smoke. They're, they're still star power after they die. You don't hear no more people just argue about Nipsey and can't wait for Nipsey albums. Mm-hmm. When it come down to King Von, King Von actually, he's staying alive from all the beat. They still talking about King Von every other day. Is a, I mean, every other week is another story about King Von. Did he kill this person? They didn't try. He just got snitched on. He been dead for three years. I <laughs> know. I bet the three-hour <laughs> King Von documentary sent his streams yeah, to the so, roof, so, right? so, 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 like I said, and then you, then we come down to Mo3. Mo3 got a signal like Chris Go and everybody. They they got a Mo3 sector every night. About 40 people go live about Mo3. Mm. And the anticipation of this album is crazy. But it's bigger than King Von and Nipsey Hussle because, and Pop Smoke because at the end of the day, I keep it alive. So I could string this for another five years and then, it then come with a movie. But do you think that uh, emotional pain, R&B-ish hip-hop has like a longer shelf life than drill music on average too? 
Yeah, yeah, because 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 the pain the pain music get people through their day. Mm. Everybody ain't killing for life, right? After you get through killing, after you get through gang banging, it gonna be a time where you got to realize how to keep your lights on. Mm-hmm. That's why Rod Wave is winning right now. Rod Wave, that pain music is better than the drill music because people go always go through shit. After you get through the drugs and the drilling and all this, now you got to figure out how to pay your pay your bills. Now, and that's where y'all came in at because y'all have made gangsters open up and talk just to get money in their pocket. Mm. All them people in Chicago, now they grown now. So now they got to talk about and get money talking through podcasts and open up on how they really feel about life. Mm. So after the dri- after the killing, now you who go pay your bill pay your bills because once you're in the midst of killing and sliding, you going home and get some ass and have kids. Mm. So once them kids turn four or five years old, then shit, man, I can't listen to that drill shit no more. You can't listen to it at all. Yeah, I got to figure out how to pay. But even the Mo three was talking about violence and shit, right? Is it just because it's a better balance? Uh, uh, he was talking about violence, but the songs that he, that made millions was the. Everybody ain't your friend came from the heart. Mm. I never liked the drill music. I never liked the killer music. Right. But when he gets to singing, all his singing music made millions. Yeah, I mean, if I have to be totally honest, it's like I like doing the drill interviews and I find the shit fascinating as fuck. But at the same time, how often do I go back to a lot of it? I mean, it's not it's not you that. No knowledge I go it. back to King Vaughn. Yeah. Yo, yo, you Chicago for real. Yeah, but like King Von, that's a that's an easy one. He made a lot of Where really great music. Where did King David from? King David, <laughs> famous what? Richard. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the dude that came here with the King David on King David. Where? Are you yeah, from? yeah, that's famous Richard. He's from Chicago. Oh, so yeah, Chicago. Listen, Chicago is not making off music anymore. They're making it off their personality. But I mean, compare every drill rapper ever to how much like Juice World's catalog is worth. Ooh, come on, that's mm-hmm. just. Like one of the crazy. That's probably the the most profitable Man, artist that's came out of Chicago throughout the last fifteen helping, years, right? I was helping Duck Mama put the Duck album together, right? Oh, they're still working on that. Okay. Listen, the record labels. Damn, I hope this don't fuck kick back me in my head. The record labels help get them killed. Why you say that? Man, they got some good music. He's singing, telling stories on these on these songs that never been released. It's not no drill shit. It's shit. It's shit about living life and helping throughout the life. And they put out the shit that he talking about slide and all this other shit. Mm-hmm. Why would y'all just put that out? Because it, it, when you put the drill music out, but his biggest song was slide, which is basically I know, like a murder that, anthem. That that that, that wasn't shit to compare it to the music that she got over there right now. But why would that make you say that they wanted him dead or that they planned it? Here we go. Y'all try to set me up. <laughs> Hey, y'all try to set me up. Can we? Can we, uh, get, we? We need to get another mic set up. <laughs> you already know who's in here now. <laughs> Why he got true religions on? What the fuck is going on? He yeah. got true religions on. Little birdie told was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I can't believe you got here that fast. I thought it was gonna take you a little while. <laughs> So now we're, Alex, Alex, no, I, don't, I don't trust you. You don't trust I'm me. I'm always here 30 minutes hit the blocks. You know I'm getting my team coming to me. You're paranoid <laughs> as fuck, bro. What, what do you think I'm going to do to you? <laughs> fuck with the clan. Fuck with the clan. <laughs> the clan is politically useless. What are you talking about? Everybody's always gassing up the clan. The clan ain't doing shit. I, I like them. I fuck, I, I, I fuck all they do. At least I'm not fucking no more black girls. Really? Man, you have to understand. White pussy's underrated. Man. Thank you. That's it, awesome it, to it, hear. Finally, if they got an ass, mm. oh my God. No more black girls. Fuck that shit. You got to worry about the brothers. You got to worry about the cousins. You got to worry. I got burnt by a black woman. What'd she do? She gave you STD? Gunnery. Yeah, gunnery. You can get those from white women too. Trust me. But, but it, it comes from, come from the hoods. Gonorrhea? Yeah, it's, it comes from the hoods. You can get it from anyone. No, but I, I don't know where you getting them from down south. It's the hood. That, that hood gonorrhea. Oh, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different fucking flavor. Yeah. <laughs> I fucked a, a prostitute from Miami one time and she For burned real? me. She yeah. did. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't pay to fuck her, but I knew she was a prostitute on yeah. the side. Yeah. And I was off the of Zans and I fucked her raw and. Z- got Zanx. Burnt. Yeah, it was back in the day, 2017, probably. Yeah. Man, when Zanx hit Dallas, Texas, niggas was falling asleep left and right. Right. <laughs> Bad. I remember hearing people talk about Xanax parties where everybody was just like yeah. half passed out on the fucking couch and shit. During but shit that done era. escalated now. Them perks are killing people and they still taking them home. Yeah? You think perks are worse than Xans? Oh, wait, well, 
Yeah, because you don't know which one you go take to make you drop dead. Yeah, well, that was the problem with Zans too. Once people start dying, it seems a lot less. Yeah, cute. but but you you but basically, you know, Zan, a lot of Zans you just fall asleep. But the perks, it's like Russian roulette. You don't play with all that shit. Hell no. No, but you, you're so in the streets, you know all about it. Yeah, I know. I I be fucking with the girls that do. I got yeah. a girl right now to take eight perks a day, and she'll sniff them. What the fuck? Sniff? Yeah, the, the animal. You Does hear she me? live under a bridge? Is she unhoused? What's going on? No, nah, fat ass. <laughs> you hear me? So fat you'll take a homeless bitch with a fat ass. Nah, she's not homeless. You real. <laughs> yeah, she's not homeless. Yeah, if she's snorting eight perks a day, she might not be presently <laughs> homeless, but it might be a little bit down the timeline that homelessness and, and, is kind of inevitable. And it's the fake ones. She's snorting fake, eight fake perks a day. Yeah. I feel like you need to hold yourself to a higher standard. This is the type of bitch that's going to set you up, get you nah, robbed. No, she ain't going to set me up. You better need, you need a security guard to just watch this bitch, whoever you're Man, talking about. Man, she just like giving up some ass. <sighs> yeah, if I was snorting <laughs> eight perks a day, I might be giving up some ass, too. Bro, no, 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 no. A girl from L- L.A., from the, one of the Mo3 videos, who flew her to Miami, uh, be with Tory Lanez before Tory Lanez got locked up. Mm-hmm. And she was just like, Rain, I need some pills, I need some perks. And it's the most beautiful girl in LA. Mm. Like, so it's out here too. You know, you done friend caught some girls with all them perks. Oh yeah, for sure. But I don't really know. I don't really ask. So you took a perk? Uh a couple times in my How life. How do it make you feel? Real like mellow and kind of like laid back, but then you also sort of feel, I don't know, it's kind of got like a weird energetic thing to it. It's, mm. it's a weird one. It's kind of <laughs> just like a regular pain pill, but I don't know. <laughs> you listen to Sukiana? Uh, I try not to, but I, I have a little bit in my life. <laughs> I've watched Listen, a few videos. You, yeah. uh, do you agree? She got you. Got to be a nasty motherfucker to put your tongue in a grown man's ass. No, I get my ass licked whenever oh possible. My God, oh my God! I fucked this porn star that I thought was super hot the other day, and I didn't expect her to go eat my ass, and she just fucking dove no, right listen, in there. Listen, I didn't listen. see it coming either. I was so happy. This is sexy red. Listen, the rap game is terrible now. The right? booty hole brown. Right. The rap game is terrible now. Like, I'm looking for a, a, a rapper, a female rapper. She has to be the most ratchetest on earth. To outdo the, sexy rap. Yes, because, listen, when Glorilla came on the scene, that was the most ratchetest thing we ever seen in our life. Mm-hmm. Glorilla, if you listen to this, um, we need to find out what happened to the baby, the eight-month baby that was that the girl was pregnant with in your video. We want to see how the baby's doing, but <laughs> she was ratchet. T fucked up, skinny, her fucked up, completely terrible, mm-hmm. right? Then when she got her a, a image right, she became, nobody gave a fuck about it no more. Mm. Then you got Sexy Red came and out ratcheted her. Right. She said she done told people she had STDs and told people that she was ratchet and, and, and everybody loved her. So right now you got to go to the most ratchetest thing possible in life. For the rats of female, for the females. But I don't think that if you were like a real full blown street walking prostitute, that people are gonna really go for you like the way Sexy Red. Sukiana? But she's not like. Man, she, that whole said that whole sit there and squirted straight yellow. Ugh. But I think that's probably holding Sukihana back. Whereas I feel like with Sexy Red, I mean, she don't have an OnlyFans. Se- yes, there was a sex tape, but she didn't promote it. She didn't. She wasn't stoked on it. That's a little different, right? Sexy Red just tweeted the other day. This motherfucker stinks. <laughs> <laughs> but that's more like theatrical ratchetness, <laughs> man. You listen, know, listen, you can't get no ratchet. And then Krishan, Krishan, Blueface got some ratchet baby mamas, and, and people don't understand. They making millions off this. I'm look, I'm looking for a ratchet motherfucker right now. If you smoke single cigarettes, long kind, come on my DM. Damn, that does sound good. Yeah, straight up. Listen, I need a, the most ratchet person because that's what's winning right now. Uh-huh. Blueface won off a girl with one with a teeth missing. Yeah. Who was homeless when he met Yes. Her. Yes, you, Zach, you like to bet the homeless. So bet, always bet on the homeless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at the end of the day, the rap game didn't completely change where, man, if you got, if you're a ratchet female, if you're a ratchet out there, you know you can outdo Sexy Red, come my way. Because listen, Sexy Red can't even rap. I feel like there's something about her voice that it's, it's not just image. Like when I listen to that Drake song that she got, it's like, I don't know. She's got a good flow. She's got like a simple thing about her delivery that just kind of works for me. It's a lot of her music that I like, it's not about the image. It's not about her. It's just mm-hmm. like she comes up with like clever ass hooks and shit. Yes, yeah, you do. You know, she's just like a funny writer. And then she's a star. Because like a lot of these girls, they don't have like music that corresponds what, to their what, look. What makes her a star? Like why? Like what? Is Ruby Rose's team who helps her put together her records? What are they doing wrong that the Sexy Red's team is doing right? Because you got one one girl is like literally a thousand times hotter than the other one, 
But, but somehow but, but she don't give a fuck like, like I had a girl yesterday I said come on We gotta do a video shoot I had to get my hair done Sexy Red don't give a fuck About none of that mm. Think about If any other girl Got pregnant At the peak of their career Their career would went downhill Yeah Right or wrong No that's true The new generation Don't give a fuck Krishan Sexy Red They perform in the pregnant Yeah Bouncing their ass pregnant I wonder whose baby that is Do we know I think it you know, I got to be a broke motherfucker. Uh, no, because uh, it got to be somebody who with no, she have no respect for him. Mm. He have no, he can't be nobody with no money. You don't think? Man, you gonna let your baby be around all that smoke in the air and all this? Mm. That's not a bad point. Sexy red ass, sexy red don't made it where every girl think they could disrespect their their significant other. Mm. But all these girls are basically like encouraging like terrible behavior to Man, women, listen, right? I just cut mine off. And, and and it's it's fake, right? Because when you see the way that these girls actually act in real life, what do they do? Like the fucking city girls, young know, Miami's like dating Puff and allowing mm. him to fuck whoever God knows who in front Ooh. of her, or like around her. Like she knows all this shit's happening. But then if you listen to her music, she's talking about getting money out of dude, which I believe you that you would be doing that. But the thing about a woman is that once a woman gets to a certain level of notoriety, fame, money, etc. Almost no woman chooses to be single once they get into that position. You're right. Because, they, yeah, you're right about that. They always go and get a, girl, yeah. get a guy. And to be fair, that's true for a lot of guys as well, is that you don't see a lot of guys who are in the, like, $10 million plus net worth club that don't have some kind of serious relationship. They just usually cheat a it, lot it, and take it, advantage of it, it however they I, can. I learned when you when – you, I ain't got $10 million. I, I, I hit the $1 million mark. I realize when you got met money, 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 you have to have someone around you. You have to have a woman around you to keep everything rolling. Right. Like, if, if I didn't have no woman at my house around me or no girlfriend every once in a while, I'd party every night. Really? Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> when I look at my life, as soon as I started to get some degree of clout and uh, fame and attention, and all of a sudden I was able to fuck like way more girls than I was as a civilian before, my fucking simp brain just somehow latched on to the girl that I was with at that time and just like kind of, I don't know, I think part of it was the fact that I really fucked with her, but part of it was the fact that I just realized how out of control my life was and that I needed to chill the fuck out and I needed to stop fucking all these random girls. Like, once you get to a certain level of notoriety, that shit is really difficult to maintain. <laughs> and that's why it's crazy to me when I hear about Chris Brown or fucking... God, like, I, I, I hate to even throw him in there, but all these rappers, I hear about them having parties with 50 naked bitches and all this crazy shit, and I'm just like, how do you maneuver through that? It just feels like there's a ticking time bomb. It's the lifestyle. Yeah. Man, sometimes you get addicted to this shit when you know you can do it. Mm. You know what goes on behind them hotel doors? Not oh really. My. That's the problem. I don't know. <laughs> I want to know. Oh, my God. Yo, you got to know. Think about all the, all, the, all, the, all the shit that went on behind your hotel doors. <laughs> I've been out that game for a long time. Look, I'll, pass a hotel, I'll pass a hotel and be like, only if the world knew what went on at them hotels. It's different in the porn world, though. In the porn world, because all this before, shit is no, just kind of like before business. Before the porn world. Yeah. Before the porn world. Before the porn world, I was a dirtbag. I was like, you know, when did you get? In the, when, did you, when did you get to porn? Uh, a couple years ago. But I was like snorting coke in warehouse parties and fucking those types of chicks. I never had exposure to the whole hip-hop style, like go to the club, get a section, ball out of control. I was getting girls off straight personality slash the fact that I had the drugs. Yeah. Not like crazy drugs, oh, but so, you know, I had some So drugs. the wife you with now, that's who put you in the porn game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She turned me out. Oh, that's good. You love her? Yeah. Do you love her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a... That's what the weird thing is that... Do y'all live together? Yeah, yeah. Mm. We've owned a house for like five years. Man, that would make me so mad if Crip Mac would have grabbed my wife ass. <sighs> Reality TV. But, but you, you do crazy things know, for reality I know, TV. I know, but you're sitting there looking at it like, this is a chick. <laughs> it's a yeah. big chick. Because you use the shit out, I mean, you, you milk the shit out of Crip, Crip Mac. Uh, yeah, that's my buddy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. We, yeah. we both made money together. Yeah, but I'm saying. No, nobody has ever hit me up in my life more than Crip Mac. But you, just, you were smart about it. To you, try to get some, to try to get me to do podcasts with him and shit. Which now that he's gone, because like, that's how it is with Crip Mac. It's like, if you had a Tupac song that you owned, it's mm -hmm. only worth so much. And then he dies and it's worth way more because it's like, that's one of the only Tupac songs. Right. 
Crit Mag is not gone, but he's locked up for a period of time. So like the interviews that I have in the tuck right now, it's kind of like, oh damn, that's you got like a bunch of them? it's like it's like you Mo- Mo- putting the Mo three albums together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Oh, oh, so you got a bunch of them on t- no, Just one. Just, it's just him and Jay Main just acting crazy as fuck. It's hilarious. No, but oh, so who had Jay Main first, you or Sean Cotton? Sean Cotton, for sure. He was mm-hmm. interviewing him for like yeah. a year or two before we got him on. Yeah. So why y'all didn't pay for Mama Duck Hotel? <sighs> we did. But I bet you. She got the nicest hotel you've ever seen. <laughs> Mama Duck, you wrong for that shit. <laughs> I will tell you right now, you wrong for that shit. Well, I bet she went and got the hot. Did she eat? Did she have room service too? I don't know. If she was watching dirty movies, we're going to have a problem. No, but Jay Mingo's, Adam, you need to pay her as she weigh. And that's the big bitch right there. <laughs> that was the funniest shit ever. I just seen it. <sighs> yeah, I just seen it. Yeah, that was, that was a whole thing. <laughs> I feel like I, 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 so give me a breakdown of the early days of Rainwater. Like, I, I want to know a little bit about how you exactly got into this position. Was Mo3 wasn't your first artist, I assume, right? Yeah, no, nah, nah, look, uh, I started on high school parties. Okay. And the high school parties that I threw, um, everybody who was involved in the high school parties, um, such as um, the Stanky Leg, you know, all the songs that came out of Dallas, Duro, mm-hmm. um, they used to attend my parties. So when they attend my parties, you know, uh, my name blew up around the city. So they they songs actually got hot at my high school party. I used to break into mansions, big mansions. And we'd get to uh do have a generator, turn the lights on, have an all out party. Mm. And I used to do this for a year straight in a mansion a, a lake a, a, a neighborhood called Lake Ridge. And when the people start blowing up, I start going to the road with them from my best friend had a song called Gutter Bitch, named Trady. Okay. And Miff Hits had signed him. Miff Hits had signed him and T Pain the same year in the in the stop block and drop it dude from uh St. Louis. Right. Huey. Okay. And so um like I actually was around Miff Hits when the Toya and all this situation. And so uh Miff Hits was uh really taught me the game. And so when the Dallas scene started taking off the dance dancing, I used to go in middleman deals. So I was the first person in Dallas to how much you want for a show? You want five thousand? Then I call a dude back. Hey, I got I got a new act right now in Dallas. This is hot right now. The Stanky Leg. You want to stay? Oh, Stanky Leg. Yeah. How much? How much they want? They want eight thousand. I get three thousand. Get them five. I got a new act. Who's that? Duro. How much you want? This I did this for years hmm. until I milked the whole Dallas scene until it died down. And when it died down, I started breaking the house. What? I did. I, I broke in. How do you go from making this, all this legit money to that? Because the, the, because when you don't realize the legit money don't 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 last that long when you live in a lifestyle. Yeah, and so, especially like that kind of thing where you're basically making money off of the lack of information between parties. Yeah. that can only last so long because at a certain point they're going to develop a direct relationship. Yeah, everybody, right? so everybody clicked up and said Rainwater is the snake of the city. Oh, really? So I started. They breaking, turned it against. I started you. breaking the houses. So when I broke a house and went to jail, the Dallas scene went dead. So actually, in jail, in, in, in jail, I was the one writing raps. Like I was the one. Like I wanted to be a rapper. Uh-huh. Right, and I prayed every day. This first time, I, first time I had to meet God for myself. And two days later, after I got out of jail, I made Mo three sleep in the car, and I'm like, nobody paid attention to you. He was sleeping in the car. He, he was like, he had nowhere to stay. Okay. A girl called him and put me on the phone with him, and I'm like, what you doing? She said, nothing. I said, where you gonna be at the night? I'm coming to your house, bro. I ain't got nowhere to stay. I said, for real, I got a grand marquee. I be, sometimes I sleep in the back of the house. What? I went home and told my mom, Mama, I'm on house arrest. I just got out of jail. Mom, I just made a dude named Mo3. Nigga, you need to go get a job. Get out of my goddamn house. You were broke at this time? Broke as fuck. You need to go get a job. You got to, you got to talk about this boy Mo3, and that shit ain't going to never last, this and that, this and that. I just stuck with it. So you just knew you had that real confidence because you didn't have any experience in the uh, music business aside from just being around all these it. artists you were that's booking. It. That's it. And I just kept on. I kept on working with him. We never had a contract. To the day he died, we split everything. Really? Man, he got and we and sometimes we don't split it all the way in half. But he got his first check from Empire like four hundred thousand. That's it. You guys were really 50-50 on everything. Everything. Really? That's a good. If he had a video shoot, and hey, right, hey, right, uh, send me a thousand for pay for this video shoot. That's why when he died, it really fucked me because now I got to pay taxes. Right. 
everything went to his account and gave it to me. Sometimes, it, but the shows went to my account. But I got to pay taxes now. So if I get a million, I damn near got to pay damn near two hundred, three hundred thousand. Right. You see what I'm saying? But you're only actually getting like Cash. half of it. Yeah, yeah, half of it. Yeah. So now when he died, I got to pay the back taxes, and now all the money I get in is straight checks. Man, it's fuck me. Oof. That's so crazy. I can't go out. I can't. At least we used to make a hundred thousand a week. I can't go out and 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 pick up this money, cash money, and go home, you know, and ain't got to worry about taxes. It's crazy, though, because when people ask me why I've never managed an artist, at least one of the scenarios that I can imagine is basically what ended up happening to you, where you invested all this time and energy into something that you knew, that you believed in, and then something that's completely out of your control and kind of out of his control basically just, you know, Man, wiped listen. out all these years of, of work, right? I was on the phone and heard it out. I ain't yeah, never cried. Yeah, I heard about that. I ain't never cried as much. And you know, uh, you know, I'm from that side of town where he was beefing with. Mm. So I, if, all the guys he beefing with, I've been knowing them for years. Trap Boy, I've been knowing Trap Boy. Trap Boy used to pass out my flies. I booked Trap Boy first show. I was the first person to take him to the studio. Mm. I told him his name was Young Fr Little Freddie. I told him Trap Boy Freddie. I've been knowing him for years, years after years. Right. But I ain't like the hearts. Their hearts? Yeah. You yeah. thought they were grimy? Um you just they they never went through something in life to make their heart pure. You know, after he got out of jail, gonna be pure. Mo three was pure. He was thankful. I, I booked his first show after two weeks after I met him, because I had all the plugs on the shows. I booked his first show for seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Bro, thank you, bro. Thank you. Come on, you can take half of it. He looked at it like it was a lick and a blessing. One time, one time after two months after I met three, I booked him and Freddie for fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Right? I gave seven. I gave seventy five hundred to three. Seventy five hundred to Freddie. I gave my seventy five hundred to three. Three looked at it and said, "So how much I owe you? Uh, just take three thousand. Bet. You know what I'm saying? I went over there to Freddie's car. Are you seventy five hundred? Shit. I gotta get ten percent." Nigga, you're not even hot. Fuck you. I ain't doing this shit no more ever. But to be fair, you guys <sighs> didn't have an agreement? You and Trapper? I've been knowing you no longer than I knew him. He's hard good. He's thankful for everything he get. He come from nothing. But he only really owes you I know he don't, what he don't owe me, you agreed yeah, upon yeah, in yeah, advance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But he don't owe me nothing. But at the end of the day, it, that's why I picked this man. Because for a manager, 10% seems really low and 50% seems insanely high. Yeah, but I met this man because at the end of the day, he was thankful. You understand what I'm saying? So, so listen, when I left this whole side of town booking their shows and moved to a guy from across town and made him make more rap money than all of them, then the hate went from him to me because now you keeping him alive. You keeping him, his name ringing too much. You keeping, when I met Mo3 from North Dallas, I made him transfer to Oak Cliff, mm -hmm. the other side of town. That's where him and Freddie knew each other from, right? It got it got so big on that street where Oak Cliff people would pass Freddie's shop because he was been the most popular person in Oak Cliff for years. Pass Freddie's shop and come down there and take pictures with Mo Three, mm. or go to Freddie's shop and Mo Three standing in front of Freddie's shop. Thousand people stop Mo Three down there, Mo Three down there. It's turned into jealousy, mm. and it put me right in the middle of it because you supposed to be our people, but you over there helping him. Right. Damn. But so. I mean, throughout all that, like, you, you go through this whole thing with, like, you know, Mo 3's enemies in the rap game and stuff. My perspective from just hearing you talk, I never heard you talk about this specifically, but were you, like, the type of person that really, like, wanted to be involved in those beefs, or did you just completely turn your turn the other cheek and just be like, Mo 3, that's, that's your shit. You got to deal with nah, that separate from it, me. It came up personal for me because they feel like I turned they, my back on them. Me, me, me and Earl Spence Jr. went to the same high school, I mean, since the same community since we was, I remember Earl Spence Jr. since he was a first grade. Right. We've been knowing each other. We from the same, we from the same neighborhood for years, years and years and years and years. But you know, at the end of the day, people start feeling like you supposed to be on our side. Man, I'm on this right, this, this little nigga here righteous. I fuck with this, I fuck with my three. Mm. I'm not, I'm not finna be underneath anybody. You see what I'm saying? Like, like he's righteous. I'm riding from 100%. So it, then he started bringing me in the middle. Because the worst thing about Mo3, he can fight, he tote guns, and he can rap better than y'all. That's a triple threat. 
If he want to go make a song about you, he'll make the whole world chant every word he say. If he see you in the street, he'll beat you up. And, and at nine times out of ten, he got a gun on him. That was a man, man, he was like Lamar, he was like Lamar BMF. Mm. Pop up and say peekaboo. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's fucking crazy. Like, I okay, because that's another thing I always think about when I think about managing an artist. Because mm. realistically, the kind of artist that I would be able to spot early on and be able to say that guy's got potential, that guy's got a future, is probably going to be somebody who's street oriented, gang affiliated, et cetera. And that just seems like a lot of fucking pressure to bite that off. Because as soon as you're the guy managing him, and you could be a guy, the manager behind the scenes and maybe not attract that much attention. But if you were out here on Front Street, like me or you, where people know who we are and you're managing somebody, it feels like you kind of take on their you know, beefs you know, because you know, his enemies are going to use you as a proxy yeah. for him. You know what I mean? The managers died in this game. Uh, Lil Dirk. T Grizzly, Lil Dirk. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Fast Lane down there in Houston, Nut. Uh, it's a couple of them. Uh, uh, Finesse two time DJ uh, is exclusive. He got shot at the last event, and so you know, it's you know what you signed up for. I know what I signed up for. Every day I wake up, I don't know what I signed up, for. and I don't be around no people. Only like, only like niggas in my car and using my charger. Mm. So you know, I'm a man at the end of the day where I know what I've signed up for. But you know, I went from breaking to houses. This is better than 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 a regular job. I, I worked in a warehouse one time for 20 minutes. You ever worked in a warehouse? A little bit, yeah. Oh, my God. It's like, hell, it's hot. Yeah. And you're doing the same shit. Every job I ever had in my life, I spent the entire time thinking about how the fuck I was going to figure out how to not have to do this anymore. I was, too. I was washing cars one time. Hard at Enterprise. I found $5,000 in the trunks. Oh, somebody left. I took that money. I went and go book Webby. Lost every dollar I had. Really? Why? <laughs> Nobody came? It rained. Oh, it rained. <laughs> oh, it man. rained. And, I lost. and then I didn't pay with it. The back end. You didn't? And he was pissed? I you burnt the bridge? No, nah, I ain't burnt the bridge. Because then I'm, and I ain't burnt the bridge. But, but he didn't even have to perform because it was raining, I didn't right? Have to perform. I was 19. And at the time, I think they, they kind of looked. Rambo is mounted. He looked through my eyes and said, all right, bro, it's cool. Right. They didn't know I was going to be the person I am. Yeah. I mean, you probably didn't know either. When it, you, no. you, I, you didn't know that you had the potential. Hell, I mean, I knew, but I didn't know I was gonna meet a Mo three. Who else have you managed besides Mo three though? Um, because you're still in that game, right? Yeah, like like Bumpy Johnson, like uh, TT Bumpy Johnson. Him and Big S were best friends. They were real close. Okay. And then they um, they went their separate ways. And the, the right now, the hottest people in, in the Dallas right now is Big X and T, and Bumpy Johnson. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's got to be kind of crazy because Fredo Bang, I got Fredo Bang, asked my hundred thousand. I got Fredo Bang a hundred thousand for one show. He really supposed to be doing seven shows, end up doing one show for a brief for contract. Wait, what happened? Uh, it was supposed to be a tour. The guy who supposed to have been doing the tour, the tour completely didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Uh huh. So he came on Fredo Bang house. Um, about six, seven months ago, completely, it was a bunch of bullshit. So you had to give Fredo Bang that much money up front for this tour? He did. And I, mean, that, I middle man, I went back to my middle man days. Okay. But and, why? what was this guy doing that was fucked up? Uh, he was late on the travel. He, he had canceled a, one building, canceled another building. Uh, um, book club events. When it was supposed to be in venues. Mm. It was just out, out, of, out of sync. And he ended up briefing the country. So Fred Bank got to keep his money. Then he came back and booked Suki on the tour, 32 cities tour. After the seventh one, she canceled all her tours dates from him. So she got about she got a good nice good penny. And so that wasn't his fault, or that was, or that was because of his lack of professionalism. Yes, yes, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. But you end up dealing with a lot of people like this when you're booking shows and shit, right? I love it. <laughs> you love it. I give I give them the time. Of, I give them the the right time and the business and after that it just it's done i'm really hard on promoters uh-huh. i make them send all the money up front right yeah I, well, do they actually do that like i feel like then if you give them all the money up front then there's no incentive for the artist to actually show up then you might zoo them you know what i mean you see money back yo just got sued right got served yeah no nobody want to get sued i'm in i'm involved in the two million dollar lawsuit right now <laughs> for what <laughs> no i just had a slip and file 
Really? You know, I got one hip. One hip? Yeah, I had a hip replacement. From what? Just a slip and file. I was I was brutally I was brutally beat in the middle of the street. By who? That's a rapper from Dallas. You're not talking about the zoo situation? Oh, that was Trap Boy Friend. Okay. I he didn't beat me up. He was, I went to jail and everything that day. For at the from that zoo situation? Yeah, he told But didn't him, he just mush you? He came he came, walked up to me and slapped and mushed the shit out of me in front of my daughter. And I could have walked away. Uh huh. I, and my and my daughter probably would have said. But you guys were only fighting for what, like a little bit, like yeah, well, swinging on uh, each other for a minute. Uh, before that, it was about about thirty seconds. They didn't get the whole fight. Okay. And I realized when a bully get hit back, he can't stand it. And then I realized he started walking away. Like, oh, he walking away. Oh uh, yeah. Then I really tried to turn up. Right. Yeah. But okay, so then the cops just come, and the you're cop, saying he pointed you out to the cops. The cops coming at the end of the he said him. They took me to jail, and he walked away. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. What, what was the situation when you were getting beat up in the street? Was there a video of that or anything? Yeah, all everywhere. Oh, I think I, which which, mm-hmm. which one was this? It's just a name I, don't, I can't really pronounce, but I mean, it's, it's, I, was, I thought I was going to get shot, and I ran to the middle of the street to say they can't shoot me in the back uh-huh. in the middle of the street. Where was this taking place? Which one was this? It's in Dallas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Everything's in Dallas, huh? Yeah, Dallas was a zoo. Right. It's not anymore? No, nah, I'm getting rid of all them evil motherfuckers. <laughs> How are you getting rid of them? I'm due. I'm due. Every time, they, every time I come across them, the people that's evil, and I know that you just polluting the city and the heads of people. See, most people that talk about killing the gangster shit really ain't never been through shit. Really? I just seen a rapper the other day. I seen a rapper the, uh, at the Money Bag Yo Tour and try to make them fight. And they don't know what to do when we make them fight. When you pull out a camera. They try to make them fight you? I try to make them fight me. I, I try to make him fight me. Oh. And when you pull out a camera with some rapper that talk about a lot of gangster shit, they don't know what to do. They freeze up. Put that camera away. Put that camera away. Nah, come on, man. We, we don't fight. We Man, come on. So you're still looking for fades? Uh, uh, Just for the evil side because now the whole city is divided. Where... You got to rock with them or you can't rock with them. And the people that's, the leaders are starting all this, this division don't, can't fight for shit or not even really about their life. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to eliminate all the evil shit so the kids can be great again. Because you got 10 year olds saying, I can't fuck with these people in North Dallas. <laughs> now, at the fair, at the fair, it's so bad in Dallas where they have the fair every year, you seen no Baby dad, no fathers there. It was nothing but baby mamas and grandma was taking them kids there because they were scared something was going to happen. You, then, you went and this was your experience? Yeah, I go every year. I take my kids every year. I just had triplets. Yeah, so it But so all the baby daddies think the, that they're going to see somebody that have yeah, to get into yeah, it Yeah, but with. then then they did. It was Oak Cliff met, Oak Cliff met uh, North Dallas. Three people got shot. At the fair? At the fair. So they were right about yeah, yeah. being cautious. Yeah, so at the end of but the, the day, it's a sad way to live. You don't want to option your whole life. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is eliminate all that problem where these people from this side can be mingle with this side. I'm getting them bitch-ass rappers out of the way. So you couldn't sign a rapper who was talking about smoking on some dead people and shit at this point in your life? Hell no, nah, because I heard a gangster mama cry. Mm. I heard a gangster die on the phone, man. Man, three last words kept saying, Rain, where you at? <sighs> where you at? And I just, I heard him. It made my baby mama say, whoever in the door he knocking on, they ain't answering the door. I said, nah, hell nah, he just got, they shooting at him. For real. So you didn't know exactly what was happening, but you, you no, they put stopped. two and two together. I heard, I'm hearing him saying, he stopped. And he said, they shooting at me. It's all on. And I'm hearing, then, he, then I heard the wind go. Yeah, they shooting at me. They shooting at me. Rain, where you at? They shooting at me. You know what I'm saying? So that changed you in terms of how you approach art, thinking about working with more artists? Yeah, because it's scary, though, because I don't want to. See, when you over an artist, you, you take the blame for what happened to the artist, not knowing that the artist was deep in the streets. Mm. You know, and then, like, right now to this day, I take, I take the blame for. A lot of shit because people want to f- blame everybody else. Mo3 was a gangster. 
My three favorite artists, my favorite artists was Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Three days before he died, we was in, we was in O Block that morning. Nobody know we snuck in there. And what'd you do? We just rolled around. He was asleep. He woke up. He he. If I could get into his Snapchat, he was just filming. Uh, damn, Vaughn. Damn, Vaughn. But sometimes God got to take these people away. This is like right after Vaughn died? Three days after he died. Three, Mo, Vaughn died on the 5th. Mo3 died on the 11th. What the fuck? But but listen, don't. sometimes, Adam, I ain't going to lie to you, God take them, t- take them type of people away from us, right? God take them type of people away from us to save other people's lives. Mm. Man, them, 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 two, them two motherfuckers didn't give a fuck. I know Mo3 didn't give a fuck. Yeah. And so sometimes he had to do that to save other people's lives. You're saying that Mo 3's death might have saved other people's lives. I know it did. Why? Because the content was influential and might have had themes that promoted Man, Mo stuff? Mo 3 was like Lamar of BMF. <laughs> so his music, you think it was really like increasing violence in Dallas? Oh, yeah. The violent rates went up. Right. <laughs> but do you think that was listen, unintentional the, the day, or do you listen, think listen, it was... Listen, the day he died... It was 24 shootings because all the whole city was just riding around listening to Mo 3. No Mo, no shooting had nothing to do with no retaliation. It was 24 shootings because now that's all the radio playing. That's all people is actually listening to. Man, it's a, it, the whole city went. Yeah. And so Mo 3 haters were just shooting people? My, not even Mo3 haters, just people, just general. Just you riding around listening to Mo3. If you riding around listening to King Von all day, all day, every day, you gonna start. You gonna have some type of bone in your body. Say, let me let's go. Let me go pick up a gun. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's definitely parts of Chicago where driving around listening to King Von could basically be like you doing enough that somebody would want to shoot you. Yeah, in certain areas. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you know, Mo3 was a good Mo3 was a good heart, but you know, at the end of the day. Uh, you can't push a uh, Gemini got two or three different personalities. Uh huh. You know. I know a few Gemini's. Yeah, so you know, ain't nothing wrong. But God, God had you know God had to do that with them too. Even, even Tupac. Think about Tupac alive for the next thirty years. He had an influence on everybody. Mm-hmm. And it's one of become for destruction because even young boy. Guy had to pay him put on, on on house arrest for two or three years. Young boy in the streets is crazy. It's hard to imagine. Man, I just ran into B ten, Ben ten in Montana now. How they doing? After the strip club, man, Ben ten, wow. Yeah, he is. He wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. He wow, wow. Yeah. And the the, the cruel thing. It was going to be a whole shootout. This side, this side, and they thought the people that I was with, somebody else, been ten rolled up. Ali been Ali car just started swooping in. And Montana was like, Ryan Water, what's up? And he told Ben Ten, you know Ryan Water, right? And then he was like, Yeah, yeah, I know him. Remember who the other people rang? That, that's that's my artist, AOF Key. AOF Key is my artist. AOF Key, the one of the biggest street rappers in Dallas right now, little 19, 20 year old. Uh-huh. And uh they were just on some gangster shit where they not finna back down from nobody. Each other. I'm in the middle, like, man, fuck this shit, man. Y'all good, they good. He with me. Man, y'all been 10, y'all tripping, man. Y'all need y'all trip right here. And I defuse the situation. Then they friends. Wow. <laughs> but I don't wanna do that shit no more. Fuck that gangster <laughs> shit. Have you always been able to kind of have that effect on people or? Yeah, I try to, cause I'm the friendly one. Did you ever try to clean up shit from O3 and try to yeah, make I, his I, beefs less intense? Because his beef wasn't had nothing to do with personal. It was jealousy. Mm. You got these two rappers over here on this side of town, right? On this side of town where they like, they like the, the, they're like the, the coolest kids on the school. It's a school district, right? Mm-hmm. Now you got this other kid to come in that really couldn't dress and really wasn't popular as y'all come in and now when he come in, it's like, Everybody, like, ooh, it's a gangster here. It's a gangster here. Man, people still hating him. The cool guys still hating. Fuck him. Mm. Dallas wanted a gangster until they finally got a gangster. Right. 
<laughs> when they finally got a gangster there, they turned it to a blaming people. They started blaming the manager. Right. You did this, you did that. Nah, y'all done pushed this man to the edge. Was that surreal for you to have people blaming you for Man, him? that hurt my heart, man. Even his family, man. His family. Man, listen, listen. The appetite for conspiracy theories is fucking mind blowing. Yeah, man, how the hell I got some do? How did Suge have something to do with Tupac Delta? He got shot too. Hmm. How did P. Diddy, P. Diddy have something to do with Biggie and he just lost the biggest artist? He, 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 man, P. Diddy been so fucking rich right now, Biggie was still alive. Right. He only had two albums. That wasn't shit. When people he, are like that about everything. Yeah, everything. I mean, even his uh, Motri family. Some people call each other like, uh, we just don't know. We don't know. You don't know what? Or one person called out, he died and said, I was just wishing everything stopped. I said, yeah, you're right. So look, that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna call them over there and say, "Hey, y'all, Mo three dead and gone. Let's go. Let Let's go make some money together." Mm. Like, no, no, no. I don't want you to do that. What you want? <laughs> what you mean? You don't know. My My daughter go to school. Go to school to this day. I gotta wake up and take her to Oak Cliff every day. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, but you know, Mo, Mo three was my friend. Right. He ain't turn his back on me. I ain't gonna turn his back on him. And I know every. I know every. <laughs> Accomplishment in his life that he looked like a big accomplishment too. When he met you, he was so happy. We going, bro. I got the text message. Ryan, get ready. We going no jumper. When you text him back, going no jumper. When he went to Vlad, when he went this, when he went that. That's my real friend. So I ain't go back down, even when he here or not. Even the people that didn't like him when he here, I don't like them neither. Because mm-hmm. you made it harder, my friend. Is there? But with him being gone, do you think there's any chance of you ever being able to get past that and be able to squash beefs? I'm getting them out the way. It's just it's just two individuals. It's evil, man. Man, it's too much blood being shed. Where you gotta get we gotta get them out the way to start over. We gotta hit a reset button. Get them out the way sounds crazy. Huh? Get them out the way. Oh, uh, I mean, get. <laughs> Could I mean, be easily misinterpreted, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I'm saying just period. Like we gotta, we got they get they step out the way. Like what's guy? He, you know. It's, so uh, you're not gonna go kill him yourself. Uh, you're gonna uh, sort of like have a talk with God and uh, hope uh, that uh, they uh, any, get gently any, moved any, out the way. Yeah, yeah. Any, anything like like like. Hmm. Like put like this, like they go get they step out the way. Sometimes people get, sometimes people treat they step at their own position. You know, even like trap riding with a gun. What the fuck you riding with a gun for? You know it's hot. Wait, he got a gun charge recently. He got a gun charge with the prison. He in prison now. Oh, yeah, he in prison right now. So what were you yelling at him? And ha- had you just not seen him for a really long time before you saw him in the parking lot? That was my first time seeing him. No, Ever? I seen him before, before that. He, okay, he did some goofy shit. Then that was my first time seeing him. Like we right there. Like where was that in the parking lot of the club uh, or some shit? Of, of arena. Okay. He was coming to the back door, but I didn't know he was gonna be there. Mm. I was just walking in and we seen him. He was walking towards me. I'm like, he walking towards the door, and I asked him, "Damn, bro, we gonna see here like we don't see each other?" Then he didn't, I said, "Bro, we gonna see here like we don't see each other?" Oh yeah, what you? And when he said that, it just went off. And he ran across. He ran to the middle of the street, put his hand in his pocket. Now we gotta show these kids. We ain't we ain't here to kill each other. That's what he was saying. No, I said that because he oh. was in his hand in his pocket. Like, okay. I got this, I got this. Man, we ain't here to kill each other. Come on, you we been you been rapping and making these people feel like. Listen, let me tell you like this, Adam. Mo three didn't die off no rap beef. Mo three died off a jealous baby daddy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I heard you talk about this. Mo three sit there was taking pictures of the kids. It's one of those things where everybody just assumed it was his ops because that's they the start making songs narrative to put together. Yeah, yeah. and Mo- then people start kind of amping it up, right? Yeah, Mo three thought man, man, he didn't die on no jelly baby. That Mo three was tons this man taking pictures of the kids, flying this girl out of town to L.A. and this girl on the, on Snapchat and Instagram. Uh, my new boyfriend got everything I need. My new boyfriend, Rich, we I finally, you know, making a baby daddy mad. Yeah. You ever made a baby daddy mad? I don't think I have. I didn't. I, I haven't fucked too many girls with kids, I don't think. Yeah, I hate that shit. <laughs> and then look, y'all hate that shit. It's something I don't do. Most of the girls I kick it with are not the type who are like actively breeding. Yeah. They're usually too irresponsible for that. Yeah. Oh, so you like young girls? No, I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> More like strung out on yeah. drugs. Yeah, but but nah, you know. So, my my past life though, that really was true. Is that the types of girls I was hanging out with? Yeah, like 22, 23. That, they want to hang out till six in the morning. Yeah, getting yeah. fucked up. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, time to have kids. See, down south they breeding. They like they like bullies. Mm. <laughs> they just breeding. And shit. Down south it's just a lot harder to not have kids. Yeah, so they breeding. Everybody fucking. You mm. know what I'm saying? They breeding, but you know, yeah, he died off of jealous baby daddy. You know. Right, and I mean, 
if you a rapper and you want to get some if you want to get some plays right now mm-hmm. The goofiest shit you can do to get you some streams. If you see somebody die across town, just act like you did it. Yeah, yeah, I heard you say that. <laughs> and it's it's sad but true. It's true because that's how the rap game has got. That's how the rap game is, though. You go get streams. And, and the streams you get off, off this, it just, it only lasts for like a month or two. Right. Because once people have seen it, that's it's kind of over. Yeah, so then, then people don't know what to do. Right. So at the end of the day, and it's the dumbest shit. That's why you can't let the record labels and stuff put that shit out. And you know, uh, uh, that's not everlasting music. Mm. Because all the drill rappers, they jump off with all this money. Now, you probably get, I ain't never seen a, a drill rapper get millions. They got to switch it up some type of way. Oh, yeah. You can't just keep doing yeah, that. Yeah, so they get about 250 I think Duck said he got 150 from his first time. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a drill rapper, they blow it. And then they wait for the label to put out some more music. And, but you're stuck in the same environment. But I feel like from the label's perspective, what they're kind of hoping will happen is that they sign a drill rapper early on in his career uh, and that maybe that authenticity that is being lended to him as a person through the drill shit is going to be able to sort of be like shaped and molded into something more commercially appealing, which is kind of like what happened with Vaughn. You know, it's like he he, he came out rapping like just like a straight drill rapper, and then as time goes by, they start getting better beats, and he starts putting better hooks together, and all of a sudden you have somebody who was able to, like, kind of emerge from the drill right. shit the same way that Dirk did. Man, and, listen, Fred O'Bane got issues with his label right now because they signed Fred O'Bane because of the beef he had with Youngboy. Right. Now he now he having issues with them now because, you know, Fred O'Bane went to a good period of uh, a happy period of his time where he started making kind of happy music. Mm. But he wasn't rapping about that same old get back killing shit. They stopped, they stopped putting, they shelved him. Mm. That's crazy. But Dirk was the smartest one at the whole drill situation. Why you say that? He switched it up. Yeah. But he had the talent to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most rappers, they tried. Like Chief Keith, I don't think Chief Keith had the talent to do it. You don't think Chief Key has a talent? Holy shit, that might be the no, the, the, the only like anti Chief Key sentiment I've ever heard anyone say on here because everybody reveres him so much. No, he had talent to to make the killing the the drill music. Oh yeah, he but, couldn't switch over. Yeah, but I feel like Chief Keef is indep- is different because he's sort of so in his own lane and just it's like he can't conform at all. Whereas Dirk, I look at him as like a smart dude who's able to look at what's going on and see what Future's doing and kind of come up with his own version of what Future's doing. And then he's seeing what Vaughn's doing and he's able to like keep that kind of energy. And like so, he's just strategic with it, whereas Chief Keef is not strategic at all. So who if had Chief a better Keefe, career? If Chief Keef has another hit, it will be an accident. So who had the better career? Exactly, he won talent enough to do it. So who had a better career? Oh, Dirk, for sure. <laughs> yeah, as, yeah. As, a, as a business? <laughs> yeah. For sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Chief Keef is like part rapper, part like internet legend. In a way. What happened to Quando Ronda? Well, he got picked up for uh, these Fed charges recently, right? I'm telling you what happened to his career, though. We basically got blacklisted out of the game for that Vaughn shit, right? Yeah, so listen, let me tell you this. They let you make the op music, but when your op die, there goes your career. Mm. When Dolph died, that was Black Youngster's career. You really think? Hell yeah. Well, he can't play that card anymore. Exactly. But there's certain rappers that dissing them is not going to be really appetizing to the people because they're so beloved. Yeah, I know, but it's too late. It's, it's, you can't diss them. You can't do nothing no more. They gone. So mm-hmm. there go your career. You have nothing to rap about. Even uh, El Quando Rondo, when Von, the Vaughn situation, Quando Rondo went completely downhill. Yeah. So these, the same fans would love for you to diss this person, diss this person. They like, y'all go back and forth. But when somebody get killed, then they feel sorry for them. Yeah. I mean, that is the crazy shit about <laughs> it, is that Quando's guy just killed someone popular. Yeah. So his career gets fucking frozen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So and he good. lost out on a million opportunities from that. Whereas, on the other hand, you know, there's been situations that you can think of where somebody gets killed who the people don't don't like or just don't even care about. I mean, nobody gave a shit about Von Diss and Duck. Yeah. And Duck was a reasonably popular rapper, but, you know, people people weren't so in love with Duck that they found it disgusting to hear somebody diss him, right? Man, listen, yeah, it, but it's one thing, it, and it's one thing about the situation. Chicago was so evil. Mm. The whole world picked a side. It's kind of uniquely evil, huh? That's crazy. The whole world picked a side. Right. You know? Uh, uh, I remember, th- this is just like a weird example, but I remember back in the day, 
Six Nine had a problem with Trippy Red. Right. But it was early on when mm-hmm. Six Nine was like really small. Right. And Six Nine actually didn't really go that hard on Trippy Red because he felt as if Trippy Red's fan base was so much bigger than his at the time that he didn't want the smoke with him because I think he was aware that if you beef with someone who's like way more well liked than you, it's really, really hard for you to be seen or for, mm-hmm. for you to gain fans. But then once the tables turned and all of a sudden Six Nine was bigger than him, he took it upon himself to like constantly beef with him after that. And I mean, there's there's a percentage of the rap population who just like if you take a perceived L in a beef, that's just it. Like it's yeah. just, you, you can't come back <laughs> from that, which is super it. sad. But there's a lot of a <laughs> lot of people have fell victim to that. Shy Glizzy got his chainsaw. Boom. We, we, you never heard from him you again. Never heard from him again. Yeah. And he has some good songs out of that and shit too. And the songs were able to do all right a little bit, but it was never like it was. Only person I've seen def- defeat the eyes but Boston Richie. He didn't, but he did because when he was when he Boston Richie moved quicker than anybody ever seen in the last couple of years. In terms of blowing up, yes, yeah, and then with Future and then, and I was with Twin, one of his managers, and uh, 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 with Future. So I'm watching the whole situation. As soon as the snitching came, he stopped being around Future. So, but he still can kind of float. Mm. And and it, it, I, I see now he back packing out shows. But if that would never came out, I believe that he would be huge though. But you know. At the end of the day, man, y'all judging a person that was 16, 17 years old. He seems like he's still doing real well, but it also feels like maybe there's a ceiling or there's just like some percentage of people that aren't going to fuck with him where like uh, if it hadn't been for the decision shit, he would have every rapper in the game like really trying to work with him and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah At least on right. the street side of things. No, you're right about that. Like right now, but it ain't about rapping no more. Mm. The rap game have changed where it's not about rapping. It's, it's about personality. Right now, Honeycomb Braids to run the rap game. You might have a little bit of a Texas bias saying that because I don't know how many people in LA are really thinking about him. But uh, but you're right though. But 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 L- I'm, I'm just, let's be real. LA LA now don't have no. Mm, oh, I the know. South yeah. is running the game. <laughs> Once right now, Honeycomb Braids got out of jail and going live about finesse two times and this and that doing that. He's just being. A, commi- a personality on the internet and showing his personality by going live and this and that and everybody tuned in. Right now he had five num- five videos top 20 on YouTube. Really? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know it was that crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking about driving down there, uh, or not driving, but flying out there and doing an interview with him and then there's this other pop- podcast that I check out from time to time uh, called the uh, Pop Austin Media, I, like, I believe. I don't like you don't fuck with them? Man, T.T. <laughs> Naughty's full of shit. He just be talking shit. He don't even know what he be talking. Yeah, I've been trying to catch up with him for years and he just be talking shit, man. I don't, man. Damn, I like that other guy, Chris, though, too. I They're both de- fucking entertaining I developed fuck. Chris on my goddamn lives. Really? Chris used to come on my lives on Instagram every all the time. Chris I, J. Jack. And yeah. I don't know what we're talking about. Right? I, 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 created, I created Chris, man. And they went over there. They cool, man. Nah, fuck T.T. Naughty. Really? He done made me mad so many nights. Nice. He's a hothead. He be barking on people on there. He like a, he's a minister of Charleston White. <laughs> he's like a, like a wrestler. He's like just giving these like passionate <laughs> rants so about go, shit. So you didn't go do the interview because they did it. No, because they said that they went to do it and they showed up with security and all this shit and that they just basically got like stiffed out of it and they, then Honeycomb Brazy wasn't trying to do it. I don't know if they actually like got off nah, with you, money or anything. But you but, add them though. Yeah, yeah, no, I was thinking that too. Like, they ain't going <laughs> to pull that with my uh, white ass. <laughs> yeah, you, I think you just sit here in your own kingdom and just live your life. No, but he can't leave, so I would I have know. to go there. Why you don't go there? I mean, I would, but it's like, Adam, you know, I just got a lot Adam, of shit going on. Adam, you're not hungry no more. Know, bro, but you got to see my fucking schedule of how much shit I got to do next week. I got 15 interviews next week. Hey, so if you, this, here. I don't understand that, but listen, if you had the chance right now to pay a half a million dollars, would you go interview young boy? Half a million? Hell no. He can, he can suck it. Half a million? What the fuck? For real? This shit ain't worth that much to me. Hmm. You'd be on a whole nother level. Plus, I know too many people who have gone and interviewed him for free. Uh, I ain't getting taxed like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I, I fuck with them, but I don't fuck with them like that. They tell my they tell my partner Doug, Doug in Dallas, they said they 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 charge Doug a million dollars. Cause what Doug do, he come set up a live stream in your house and he could perform and stream it on pay per view while he's in the house. He was gonna do this with Young Warrior. Did he did do this? He didn't do it. He didn't do he it. He charged him a million dollars. I kept telling Doug that was a perfect. That was the best thing to do. 
Yeah, you you are someone who really like advocates for artists spending huge amounts of money on support from other artists. I've noticed that from your interviews that you saying like you of course you should pay three hundred fifty thousand for a little baby verse. What hell you? I'm just like not familiar enough with the economics of being in the music business. Like from a YouTuber perspective, I mean, I guess I could see myself parting with you know a hundred thousand, ten, twenty thousand. But like my 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 top YouTube videos of all time in terms of YouTube money. I don't know. I might have had a video hit six figures, but I don't think so. I think it's mostly like fifty. A hundred thousand for Young Boy is perfect for you. you. If you, if I interview Young Boy, I'm gonna get like let's say four million views, three million, like something like that. Like four million views on YouTube, man. You probably that might be worth forty grand to me. So that's why but, I'm not. But, but it's not know. about the money. It's about the out. Now you get Young Boy's fans, subscribers. They already should should be here from all the other work I put in over the years. Nah, yo, but they're young. <laughs> That's the youth. And I realize those subscribers that you're talking about have value. I'm just saying the value is not a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, there's and, some value, but it's not. There's young boy. Yeah, and he's dope and everything. It's like a label investing thirty million dollars in him. But the thing is, young boy did Bootleg Kev. Uh, he did a complex vlog. He just did Gillian Wallow. So he kind of burning himself out, which is the same exact thing yeah. that he's done with his music. You think he burned himself out? With the music? Yeah, he's doing 30K first week and shit. Nah, you ain't, you, y'all ain't seen the big picture. I'm not saying, I'm not saying yeah, that those, is the entirety of his career, but yeah. I'm saying that the reason why when he drops, it doesn't get that much attention is no, because no, no. he just drops too I, I much. Know. And now with the media, he's doing the same thing. He's doing the mad content okay, like all this. at once. Okay, put like this. Put like this. And I'm going to tell you, I, don't know, I ain't talked to Montana in a while, so I don't, I don't know. But listen, he just signed a huge deal over here, right? Shout out Montana. Yeah, he just signed a huge deal. and they, I think it's like five albums. He can get out that deal while he's still on house arrest. When that boy get off house arrest, he's a totally different monster. I believe he got other songs over there to just waiting. So if I get a hundred million dollars over here and I got five out, I'm gonna keep on releasing, 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 releasing. When I get off, when he get off house arrest, he's gonna be a monster. Yeah, that's true. It's it's almost like he's in jail right now. He is because it's like he might be a little bit more free. He can make music. But you don't get to see him out and about doing anything, and he can't have any felons pull up on him. Yeah. So, but when he when he which eliminates most of his friends when and he get out, he gonna go for big. I think I think he might go for damn near two hundred thousand a show. You I mean, think he's good enough that he never runs out of steam with the audience? That the audience never loses no, interest. Bro, you know, I mean, people don't kill, don't, don't don't throw away their life trying to be like young boy. Mm, young boy made it popular to have herpes. <laughs> It, I remember I remember having herpes it was the end of the world, Adam. <laughs> I wouldn't say he made it popular. Uh, man, I, he, it, he did it, talk about it. He it, goes, it, I, I got this herpes in my veins. <laughs> I'm like, what the it, fuck, dude? <laughs> and people don't care about it now. The, like the, the they don't care about it now. It's it's, it's okay to have herpes because young boy had it. So that so at the end of the day, he he man, he got people. I seen people wear tight pants and walk crazy like him. And half the people, yeah, it, with the wobbly yeah, legs. Yeah, then half <laughs> half the boys don't even get haircuts no more. They got nappy ass froze like young boy had. So young boy got a. Young boy had a bigger impact, almost bigger than Tupac. I wonder if Young Boy has caused smoking to go up because I feel like I never see him without a cigarette in his hand. You ain't lying. It feels like I see him with a lot of different types of tobacco in his hand too, and it makes me wonder if he just goes to the gas station. Well, I guess he can't leave the house, but he sends someone to the gas station, has him like buy out the gas station, yeah. just like every pack of cigarettes they got. Yeah, I better leave it. It's because I'm a person. I like smoking cigarettes, but I refuse to buy a pack. Why? It's just like I'll get some from someone once yeah. in a while. I'll get a cigarette off somebody, and I really enjoy it because it's just so bad for you that I just don't want to get into that habit. It is bad for you. Smoking cigarettes, yes, yeah. very, very bad for you. Smoking weed is probably not that great either, but smoking cigarettes is a death sentence. Yeah, I, I pick up, I, 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 I take some shots of Patron and, and pick up some cigarettes. Yeah, exactly. That's how I started fucking around too. Go to the bar, <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah, everybody smokes a cigarette at like one a.m. That weed get me too damn high. You don't like that? Hell no. I walked in here and caught a contact. <laughs> weed get me unfunctional. I forget about that. That some people like. The amount of weed smoke in the air here is offensive. Yeah. Because, like, Steve-O used to be a drug addict, and he came in here, and I could tell that he wasn't really. Are you interviewed with Steve-O? A couple times. Yeah. But even him just coming in so here. So who was the biggest person, who was the biggest, most views you got? 
X. I did the interview with the most views of any rap interview ever. Oh, X X X and yeah. Tassian, yeah. It's Empire. Twenty two million views. Oh uh, yeah. So you're telling me Gazi eating off all these guys? Nah. No? <laughs> nah, the percentage guy guys, guys that give up. It's crazy. Really? Yeah, every artist in the Empire rich. Because the 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 percentage that guys give you. So Gazi's just willing to operate at a much lower margin than most people? To get them over there. It's like Costco. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I mean, really? Damn, they give you 40%. I haven't really like dug into the Listen, business Listen, I make off a 20% contract with an artist, uh -huh. I make over 100000 every other month. Right. That's for a manager. That's for a manager of an artist that didn't only had two, three albums over there. Uh -huh. So, you know, at the end of the day, guys, the percentages, you look at Money Man, retarded rich. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you know, look, Young Blue. You look at it. Everybody that signed over those guys. Yeah. Money Man got on my ass before because I said I never met a Money Man fan. <laughs> Why the fuck you say that? I just being real. Like I was caught in a moment of, of weakness where I was just telling the truth. Now nah, you're right though. There's a lot of artists like that though. Yeah. Where I mean, yeah, Kendrick Lamar. Look at his streaming numbers. Yeah. We live in L.A. Yeah. I don't know anybody listening to Kendrick Lamar. I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> well, I, I probably don't hang out with the right crowd that listens to him. Yeah. But I'm I'm saying like I never even hear him discussed. But then when I hear people talk about the greatest rappers of all time they and the biggest in, rappers, yeah. he's right up there. Yeah. But I'm just being real. Like I don't know I I, I don't know who listens to him. Yeah. I don't now, know. That wasn't true in 2012, but it is true. What money man say to you? I don't even think he said anything. He said he was going to do an interview, but then he didn't do it. Uh. That's fucked up. Man. I was just real suspicious too when they started showing that his suggested artists on uh. Spotify were like unrelated to his shit, and I was like, "Oh, that means you're you're buying plays." <laughs> well, it's like my understanding of how it usually works. <laughs> so you think Money Man buying plays? I mean, that's like usually how it works. If, nah, you're, if your Spotify recommended artists are like totally yeah. arbitrary and not yeah. related to you, I feel like there's a lot of that. Nah, guys, listen, guys, and Money Man got a good relationship. He gonna be a star, but at the end of the day, when Money Man first came out, he was hot. Mm. He was scorching her. I didn't. I, I really didn't know he gonna make it this far because you had Money Man and Money Bag, y'all. Yeah, you know Money Man is kind of a funny name. Yeah, Sounds like a superhero. <laughs> like Batman. No, nah, you know what I mean. The people he. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I honestly, I don't know him from. I don't know anything about him. Down south, they yeah, they they he's swiping and yeah, all that. Oh, he's a, he's a swiper. Yeah, you know what I mean, that's what he motivated the swipers. That's a lane. He motivated the swipers. That's like a way to latch on to a percentage of the, yeah, the yeah. fans talk out about, there these he days. He talked about money. Yeah, money man. Money man. Uh, I had a boss up for a check. Money man motivated them people. Mm -hmm. So what's YTB Fats doing right? Up tempo beats. Mm. I can't understand shit he's talking about. Everything has to be fast as fuck now? In, uh, in the major cities. Yeah. You go to LA, you go to Miami, you go to New York, everywhere. They like the fast tempo beats. A lot of times when I'm listening to new artists now, I'm just kind of like marveling at how unbelievably fucking fast they're rapping and how fast the beats are. You seen it's it? So hard to hear. It's like like hip hop has just gone down like a Matter strange fact, listen, path. The producers are really more valuable than the artists right now, but the produ producers not understanding it. Because mm. I can tell you one thing, Fats talking about, right? Or um, uh, Boston Richie. Mm. I don't really understand anything. They just it's just the beat. Yeah. What, what about like the bad rapping? Like, like, <laughs> Who's uh, the worst rapper? Well, you not think? like intention, not like bad, but like kind of like intentionally <laughs> off beat. Like like Rob Forty Nine is yeah. like he's like intentionally not yeah. really trying to be on beat at all. And there's just something like that. I, like, I can tell you one song you got. It's like a wall of sound to me yeah. as well. Yeah, I'll be real. Yeah. But it's like that now, where like the the artists that are really big, like you just because they, they have their hardcore <laughs> fandom, and then everybody else is just kind of like on the outside looking in. They not writing everything; they freestyle. Yeah, that's what's fucking it up. Everybody freestyle. Do you really think it's fucking up? Because that's so pervasive that it's hard to imagine rap ever going back to pre written shit. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. The, the people that's the stars writing shit. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, the people that you know, everybody want to punch in, do this. That shit ain't lasting long. Maybe that is the new wave. What? If ever like. I remember watching that Kanye documentary maybe a year ago or whatever, mm -hmm. and there was like all these verses that he had memorized that he had clearly been rapping to people and working yeah. on remembering and just like refining the little details of the lyrics and stuff. And I was just like, 
I mean, these verses are so much more memorable than anything that you hear these days. And I feel like the punching in method, as much as people are in love with it, has got to be part of the reason why. Man, it went down. It went down. You can't have an artist on spot say, rap a verse. Mm. And they just go in. But some people are really good at it. Rap, and that makes yeah. everybody else want to do it, even though they don't have the natural ability, yeah, I right? I know it. I know it. That's what I'm saying. That's what YTB Fat doing. YTB Fat took the spot of... Big Thirty. Mm. I ain't heard about Big Thirty no more over there. At Brick, at Brick, at Brick, uh, whatever they name. With money back, your count. I liked Big Thirty. I like Big Thirty too. But you think it's over for him? I ain't seen him no more since YTB Fat came. <laughs> to me, Big Thirty was always like Poo Shiesty. Uh, it's like if you're trying to quit Poo Shiesty, you're trying to. You might like throw a nicotine patch on. Yeah, you got Big 30. That's like Big 30. <laughs> <laughs> I really fuck with you, bro. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to diss or anything. I'm just being real. Like <laughs> well, you think um, Pooch Ice gonna do something to get out? Shit, I loved his music so much while he was out, but I do wonder if like it's too long. There's Fucking certain long. artists where like their youth and their energy is such a part of it. And I do wonder if Pooch Ice he might kind of lose some of that along the way. And but, you know, I got my fingers crossed. He'd be more like, um, he'd be more um, older and wiser. Is that what you're saying? A lot of times the best rap music comes from the dudes who are control. in this, like, early age yeah. bracket yeah. where they're just out of their minds. Like, people just like to hear from a fucking psychotic teen. But look at Finesse. He got after five years. Yeah. But the standard becomes so much higher. Your music just has to be so much better as you get older. Like when we're talking about, oh, you can get a million views from just dissing the guy who died on the other side of town. I mean, the the, the counter version of that is have talent and make great music. Mm -hmm. We just know that's like very, very difficult. And on the other hand, getting all your homies together to hold point guns at the camera and say, fuck little JJ or whatever is like easy, you know? Yeah. No, I like that. But, but the thing is uh, the anticipation when they get out. They yeah. got to know what they talk about. Like Rallo, I heard people for the, for the longest before Rallo went to jail say he couldn't rap. Mm. And now I'm li I'm watching him. He went to jail to write all his music. He's, I, I think he's a star right now. I talked to him on the phone with Celine mm. from 300, and uh, he got on all three albums for free. But he hasn't put out a music video since yes, he, he got did. out yet, did oh, he? He put out one since he got out. Oh, okay. He did numbers. I didn't even see it. it, was, it, was, it was, I think it was number two on YouTube. And then... Uh, Rallo finna be a star. Rallo is the is hip hop gangster now. Yeah, biggest gangster. I mean, yeah, he's a he, he got the the prison sentence to prove it, right? Mm, yeah, but now he just Rallo had his, Rallo had a whole a, apartment complex. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like the New Jack City yeah, story yeah, arc. Yeah, to got him. caught on a plane with a hundred. <laughs> I mean, a thousand pounds. Yeah. He's like the King Vaughn, but of trapping. You better trap it, yeah. Where there's like a real, yeah. there's a lot of evidence to go on. Get here. out of jail, little baby, pull up on with 50,000. Right. It's there, yes, 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 yeah. Now, Rallo is the truth. I always get confused when I see rappers just giving each other huge amounts of money like that. I'm so cheap. It's hard for me to fathom. I see that now, you cheap as fuck. Super cheap. I can never imagine giving somebody 50,000. What? So, so what? let me ask you a question. So, all let me ask you a question. I want to. So, all the girls on her on the page because I, I I go I don't buy your shit. <laughs> Believe that. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so look, you ain't never paid them. The girls. Yeah. We do content trade. Oh. So they're able to put it on their OnlyFans as well as us putting it on ours. Oh, okay. So I thought. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's that's even. Which is cool. Yeah. That's that's what they would always want to do anyway. Yeah. It's not like it's like our big sinister idea. It's like the, the chicks would just way rather get their content and be able to promote it on OnlyFans and shit. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I thought I was thinking sometimes like a, it's like like booking an artist, no. like a feature. I think about that though. I think about how fucking different the porn game is from the rap game. Sometimes one of the biggest differences is that the biggest chicks are so low key and humble and like easy to be around from yeah. our perspective, business wise. Whereas like the biggest rappers are like just clouded in this big fucking like web of ego 
and you could barely fucking talk to them and like they just like <laughs> are so full of themselves a lot of times like there's exceptions to that rule but a lot of rappers like really take their success as a license to I be the, the worst South person on earth I need you and South Walker to do an interview yeah I've been trying to do that forever he invited me to his show last time he was here and I just was on my old band shit and I just went home and went to bed and, uh, man I wish you and South Walker South Walker go talk about the whole goddamn man I've seen him beating some cheeks on, on uh, <laughs> Twitter just scrolling through I'm like that's not supposed to be here because yeah, that's yeah. Supposed to be an OnlyFans exclusive, <laughs> but that shit motivated me. It made me want to get in shape because I'm watching Sauce Walker with a mean six pack laying dick down. I'm like, God damn, I'm fucking out here with a fupa. Hey, where your thing at? My thing? You know the, the uh, <laughs> oh, it's right up. No, uh, no, no, no. No, okay. <laughs> nah, I'm talking about that. Don't say that because people are taking. I'd be like Charles and White or Aiden. <laughs> I'd be a Charles and White or Aiden. You want you want a peep of Kendama? Nah, well, yeah, you ain't. I, be, I know you was working on that for years. I, and I always wanted, I always said it got to be the easiest thing. It's not. Well, okay, like the simple stuff, like just spiking it is super easy. Yeah. But then beyond that, there's like a whole web of like insanely complicated tricks. I was really focused on it for a couple of years. And honestly, I think that when I got obsessed with poker again, that really just like took over the part of my brain that cared enough to like really work on Kendama tricks. That's how I survived in prison. Poker? Hell yeah. I'll fuck you up. <laughs> I know how to lie. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta be a good liar to to, to you gotta be a good liar. Yeah, oh, yeah. Here we go. Up. Here we go. Are you you trying to cut this? I thought Wack was gonna like hop on here and you guys were gonna be screaming I, I, at each I, other. I thought we was too. Hold on, These are available at nojumper dot com. Oh yeah, that, he grabs out the damn door. yeah, go get them. he might be waiting because we're supposed to do an episode with L A R our Long Beach artist D W Flame. So maybe he's just holding off. Are you, but you don't have to wrap it around like that? No, you don't got to wrap it around. Just leave it leave it hanging there. This one's loose as fuck. Huh. I never thought I would be doing seated kendama lessons with rainwater. You did, you hit it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I Watch. can't do it. You got to flip it up. Can, can we throw the mic on? So I got to have y'all two on camera at least for a little bit before we wrap Yo, up his interview, right? We heard you outside. Who you telling about rainwater and yellow bees? Oh, he loves know. relating other people's <laughs> politics. <laughs> yeah, come on, Wack. Hey, you know. <laughs> I like how they set the mic up so it's like Wack's gonna be sitting next to me. I never sat on the same side as Wack before. In all these years of pod, I never sat on the same side as you. Get over here. Yeah, 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 my, I got my, 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 Why you got a Japanese word on your let's, shirt? Let's set that up, man. Cultural appropriation. Let's set that up, man. For real, my mama. What are you guys talking about? Don't tell me that. No, I've been wanting it. Huh? I've been wanting it. Yeah. Yo, go tell them to get my cell phone right there. Yeah. It's on the armrest. Wait, you trying to pay for a feature? Yeah, oh, we just. Can't pay for no damn feature. He got a little dude he had a little dispute with. Yeah, yeah, let, let's, let's see can we do so, that. So, you know, this dude used to talk shit to me on Clubhouse. Yeah, yeah, he said that. He used to talk shit. But, I didn't, you know, it's rainwater. So, I figured, you know, I know the game. So, I'm figuring, like, you know, water doing what he's supposed to do. I didn't take it like it's a problem. I warned security before I today. I said, like, I ain't know I fuck with rain. let's make sure know? rainwater and, and whack aren't left unattended. Any nigga got a, that type of serious problem with rainwater. I'm and a, he called himself a, a like a street dude. You supposed to know how to read between the lines, right? So he's not a street dude. Mm -mm. No, Rainwater is a dude that do business with people in the streets. Like you know, he's a promoter, clubs. He's very detrimental in uh, Mo 3's career. Yeah, he tell you. You say detrimental? I mean, not detrimental. Think you mean very, instrumental? No, very important okay. in Mo 3's <laughs> career. But listen, he <laughs> he wouldn't. He's gonna tell you that. Do you want to be looked at as a street digger? Yeah, no. Nah, gangsters don't live that long. Mm. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we learned 20, that from Scott. Since Scott 2016, <laughs> I, I've been crossed over. I represent the bitch ass niggas. Mm. Yeah, right. No, you don't. Nah, though. whack. Hell, nah. But whack. Coin Mapai Ru, you say you it all the time. There told, you got Charles and White coming out here paying big money for security scared to run to you. No, Charles man. and White said, Rain, get out. That's cap. He said, Rain, said, he said, Rain get out of uh, uh, Clubhouse. He said, Whack got people you can't see their face. <laughs> Me and Charles and talk for hours. Okay. Trans people. I got a bag for him. He uh, okay? Uh, uh. I got a bag for him. Okay. We talk for hours. He had some lady called me or something. I don't know. Yeah, Dr. Okay. O. Yeah, something. Yeah. Talk for hours. Yeah. But he said he had to do his um little comedian tour. Yeah, it fucked, it fucked up. 
Oh, you, they, they still didn't get him, though. No, 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 no. They know he can get touch. Mm. You, remember, you remember for well, a long... could have been got touched. No, 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 but for a long time, people... <clears throat> I heard you, I heard all the gangsters sit there and say... Not me? Yeah, you said, we're going to leave that man alone. No. He'll call him. the police. See, with him... Uh-huh. If it's that serious... Mm-hmm. If it's that serious, mm -hmm. it got to go one way. If it's not that serious, you got to let him do his shit. Shit, he have disrespected the whole rap game. It doesn't matter if yeah. it's, listen, yeah. he's going to tell. No. Yeah. The, 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 listen, that's his, that's, that, is his, that is his camouflage. That's to keep it. Do, do you know the police in Dallas, Texas want him? He's going to tell. Do you know the police in Dallas, Texas want him? Charles is going to tell. He can still tell, right? Huh? He can still he tell, right? Tell. Yeah, but, but now it's becoming like a sporting event, like a meme Everybody to run up on Charles' wife. He don't want people to tell on him. Charles, uh, that's a federal offense. Suit yourself in a, in a, in a club. Yeah, I don't know about all that. I just know uh -huh. that if you do something, like right now, he's going to sue that club. He's gonna book the shit out of that club. No, he he, he threw some fly. He 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 consulted it don't him first. You, security supposed to not supposed to allow anybody to get on the stage. He's gonna uh. book the club and a promoter. Mm. That's, That's like fact. the slimiest lawsuit you I can possibly. I can't do. see him did a contract. You shoot yourself <laughs> in the club and you sue the club. I can't see him sign no contract. What you think he wasn't contracted? Man, to be man, what Charleston <clears throat> White is doing right now is self destruction. I did him some shit. Yeah. You said some shit about my name on one of these interviews. What I say? I don't know. You know what you said. You Let's was bring in the studio said. What I say? And you said something about I wouldn't something like whack one hundred. I wouldn't what? I don't know. It was business related. I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember. It was some business shit. I didn't know if you was trolling or what, but I didn't understand. I'm like, damn, what a what it, it was. No, something. no, let me tell you, whack. What, what, what you what, what you was, do? What was? It? I can't remember, but the thing what you did. I can't remember what I actually what said. I do? The thing what you did in this industry is you had this big persona like a Suge Knight. Never. Shit. Oh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> or Jay Prince. Or Jay Prince. Let me play that. Can I say Jay Prince? Never. Rainwater explains why he wouldn't work with WAC 100. There you go. How? See, you cap it. <laughs> uh huh. Now listen. Wait, does that say why I do that? Let me that, ask you a that's question. That's the caption. That's the caption. Yeah, yeah. I watched it question. earlier today. It was a little foggy. Have you ever heard a motherfucker say WAC extorted him? Whack had them robbed. Whack had them scared. No, that's their own person. Whack them shit. beat them up. It's because you're so no, good at extorting listen, them that we never really no, find this, out, right? I was on a plane today. You said you took a gun, a, a pellet gun, and shot a dude 15 times, no, 32, 32 times. 32 times. I, I just seen that while ago. That's the best title because it cuts it off before it gets yeah. to the fucking pellet gun yeah. part. I just seen it so, while ago, and then here we go. I couldn't right think of it. He shot a in the face Whack, 32 you was a, times? you was a fierce motherfucker. I mean, I, you know, I grew up the way I grew up. <laughs> <clears throat> but I, you know, I don't. Then let me tell you. But let me tell you why. You had this big image, and then you made yourself accessible. I'm always accessible. Look, there you go right here. Look. See that? Now I got. I keep my paperwork. What that say? Night. What year? 1989. Right. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's the charge? Uh. PC Penal Force. Course, okay. Two forty five. Okay. Force, assault with deadly assault weapon. Assault with a deadly weapon, not firearm. GBI likely. I was 12 years Great old. Great bodily injury likely. Bro, it's my whole rap sheet. You I sent me this the other day, actually. <laughs> Everything on there. The murders, <laughs> tipped, the murders, ADWs. How Yo, many murders you got here with? Why, why is I your mean, fucking yeah, phone yeah. case too big for your phone? <laughs> What's going know, bro. on here? Bro, I don't know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a phone <laughs> guy. <laughs> Apparently. What yeah, the fuck is going on? I don't give a fuck. As long as, that as long as I can drop that motherfucker to work. Yeah, <laughs> but so, if you're going to drop it, it's going to fall out. So so I don't cap. It's like a baggy yeah. condom. I'm born in 77. Yeah. 77 from 89 is 12. Yeah. 245, that's assault with deadly weapon. Yeah. Nine firearm. Yeah. Which is what? The mm -hmm. gun. Mm -hmm. so I don't, I mean, I just tell niggas about my life. But I never wanted to be a Suge. I learned, what I learned from Suge is what not to do. That's what I was about to say. That's what I learned from him. You uh, are a grimy motherfucker, Prince, but you are not I a Suge. I never shug. really was that close to him to see what he did do. I just know what his accomplishments In my eyes, why I used yeah. them too is because you will take. Now, I'll fuck a nigga up if I got you. You will take a gangster rapper and change his whole life. Yeah, but that's business. But no, I'm saying, but how many? But I see, we see you do it with the biggest blood gangster, right? Then you came back and did it with a crip and represent the crips, and you a blood, but you you brought unity to let everybody know I could take this one person and make him the king of the world. He's the king of the. He's well, one of the kings right now. I'm not a gang banger. Uh huh. 
I don't gang bang no more. Yeah, but you have. I'm from Paru. That's gonna be till death. But you but got. I'm not pow- but, but I'm saying you got the power. You can do. I don't say it's power. I just I, I'm gonna see because I don't lie that because that that when men start to swallow that type of shit to think that shit, then you 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 get off track. I just say I know, I got the know how, the influence, and the will to do. Did you disappoint people when you start talking on Clubhouse? I probably did. Did I disappoint people when I signed Blueface? Did I disappoint people uh, when, think, I, when, it, I, when I when I when I interviewed Six Nine? Did I disappoint people when I did the Kodak Black feature? Did I disappoint? Here go the thing. I'm not here for them. I'm here for me. Oh uh, yes, yeah, sir. So, and my so basically, what you're saying is first that, that you have switched over. No, I switched over what? From from you, I, you I, are I not always, a gangster. You're not a gangster. No, no listen, listen to me. Uh-huh. I. Make no revenue in the streets. If you brought me a, a duffel bag full of money, I'm going to tell you, go make it a cashier's check and send a wire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So yeah. when it comes to my corporate business, the streets have no say so, zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. I don't bring my corporate business to the projects. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about shooting a video in the projects. Yeah. You know if I want to shoot a video in the projects and I just didn't want to go to the pro, what I'll do? Uh-huh. Green screen the projects, uh-huh. send a nerd over there with a drone at about four o'clock over the park, mm-hmm. <clears throat> catch this nigga shooting dice and fighting, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Get a few low rider clips, and then edit the shit in, and the artist is in the projects. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. The streets is not in control of the industry anymore. Yeah, I know that. You know that. Gangsters don't survive, <clears throat> they're not in control. You know what but, I'm but saying? But there's no like hypocrisy about him fucking with Blueface because bullshit. People nigga, care. Nigga was I thought cri- the- what that nigga was called himself the famous Crip had a song called "Respect My Cripping." But where you know you're from I- doesn't beef with his hood, right? That don't got. See, you listening to this little kid X Four? You teach me, right? X Four is great. Yeah, shout out to Listen to me. By nature, Crips, Bloods, and Paw Rules, red and blue, we automatic enemies. Yeah, I don't give a fuck where you from. Yeah. I just have so many people tell me that that's not really the case anymore. No, that's cap. Okay. Now, you got just, that's the basic law. Then you got your main enemies. Right. The dudes okay. on the blocks over from you. Then you got your distant enemy because your neighborhood went to a, a skating ring in a neutral area and another neighborhood went and a nigga got shot and killed and a nigga from another neighborhood did it. Mm-hmm. So that's your distant enemies. Then you got your internal enemies. Niggas is from your neighborhood you don't get along with. Mm. It's all kind of motherfucking enemies. Okay. And then some niggas is their own enemies. Right? So at the end of the day, I fuck with who fuck with me. I don't get Why is fuck. Rainwater a snitch? You've said uh, that. No, Rainwater. No, Rainwater. Did. What did Rainwater do? Rainwater's <laughs> got a lawsuit. He you can't lawsuit. even remember. Yeah, nobody, lost, <laughs> nobody went to jail. Nobody just lawsuit. No, you ain't called the police on nobody. Uh-uh. Uh, he, I just kind of believe my baby mama was not long ago. So was that just a clubhouse opinion? But I, no, I don't think I said it. It might have been said. No, room. when Wack on clubhouse, he might say one thing. Yeah, I don't think I he, said it. He have a hundred people say it. Yeah, and he got to come. Are you saying you want to get out with Yellow Beezy? Man, I can't say no <laughs> name, man. But yeah, let's FaceTime somebody, man. Let's get it started. We need to do it for the black community. No, for real oh, though. No. Yeah, man, I got to open. Now you the can't process. disrespect that for you. I'm not disrespecting you nobody. You can't do that. We can't do we because don't I'm informed of him. Yeah. Can't Why you say you in form of him? That's my little partner. I fuck with Beast. He mm. always been all right with me. Mm. He's always been all right with me. We didn't do this for the community. You think you can win? Man, I'm a beast. You think so? you had a fight before? Yeah, I was a beast at the zoo. I oh, fought his partner. Show him my, his partner out fight at the yeah, zoo. He fought yeah. a guy at the zoo yeah. in front of his kid. Yeah, I was locked up. I, That's crazy. I could hold my own. No way. <clears throat> yeah, not, I was going to say, man, I'm that's a pretty gonna, serious phone call to place. I can make it, too. I mean, you are the great I'm, I'm troublemaker. Not, I'm not quit even oh, hip hop. He, he gonna hang up in your face. Oh, he won't. I mean, I be trying. Listen, listen. One thing I always try to do, I try to get in the room with somebody, and go, whatever happened, it happened. You will not get in the room with Beezy. Cut the cap. Man, this listen. ain't clubhouse now, listen, bro. Listen, that's all. That ain't you. Come listen, on, listen, bro. Listen, we, listen, we had a fight before. That me, wasn't me, no, no fight. No, 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 no. Not that time. Before that. You I put him on the his. Listen, I put him on his ass. They had him like plug talk style on all four. No, no, no. Listen, <laughs> listen, 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 listen. That nigga was on plug. They had I, you on all four. Listen, 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 listen. They listen, did. Listen, listen, uh, listen, 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 listen. Bro. So you had a head up with. Yeah, me. before that. Yeah, listen. I told everybody. Had everybody in the city said I whooped his ass. That's why he went back to the camera. Said I beat him up by myself. He, he had something to prove. Oh, that clip. Yeah, he had, he oh, had yeah, something yeah. to prove. But listen, at the end of the day, I thought I would get shot. 
Nigga, I forgot you forgot rappers got shot here, shot here, side of the highway and everything. I told I told myself if I can run to the middle of this street, they can't shoot me in front of everybody. And then when I called Mo three, when I call, listen, when I called Mo three, I said Mo three, they jumped me. He said, <laughs> they jumped you. Yo. So you telling me, okay, you ran to the middle of the street. Yeah. So how'd you get on all so, fours? Because my <laughs> hip was broke. I I got a I got a I got a hip replacement. Let me tell you like that. Let me tell you how everything started. I walked from the next club. I seen baby, me and baby was at the next club. They tell me money, uh, Mayweather is at V Live. I just left LA because we went to the MMO3, went to the Grammy Day for. I walked there, got there, went in the parking lot, sat for 40 minutes. Everybody dapping me up, but everybody looking at me crazy. Like, what's going on? They thinking Mo3 there. They thinking we really don't learn to play. Guns start coming out. I, tried, I said, what the fuck? I'm going to go inside. I tried to go inside. The security said, hold on. Hold on, Rain, don't go in there yet. He ready a rainwater right here. Next thing you know, a nigga come outside with a Glock. Then the door just open full of niggas. I never knew. But security supposed to have Glocks. Yeah, no, 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 no. It wasn't a security. It was ra- it's like they told the whole club rain water outside, and the whole club ran outside. Yeah, but that ain't got nothing to do with Beezy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I never seen. I never knew that. Was, I never knew. Beezy don't keep guns. Yeah, yeah. On yeah I, I never knew that was him. I never knew what was going on. You had a whole club. Yeah, yeah. I know. I never knew what's going on. I'm at a whole club. You know how many people don't like you? No, 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 no. Let me tell you this. How they say rain water outside? Everybody run outside. Uh, 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 you know why? Because they thought Mo Three was with me. Now, no, I I ride, I ride everywhere by so myself. They didn't like Mo three. I mean, Mo three was a a nigga that sit there and stood for something. I never met him. I never met yeah, him. Mo, th- to his Mo music, three was Mo three was the person that stood for something that went across. The, uh, he stood for something and died. He, he either go stop, stand for something or die for nothing. Yeah, but I will say this respectfully. Mo three was playing. Playing what? Listen to his music. Uh huh. Me listening to Mo's music. Uh huh. And I forgot who turned me on to uh-huh. him. I said, man, this brother's serious. Like I'm. I'm oh yeah, damn. He was saying. a damn fool. But here go the thing. Mm-hmm. When it came time for it, yeah, but, <clears throat> what he was rapping about, it, it he wasn't moving it, like that. It happens to Vaughn and all of them. Happened to Pac, happened to all gangsters. All gangsters get their day one day. What you mean? A- every gangster get their day Pac one day. Pac wasn't a gangster. Uh, no, uh, but, okay, put, he was more of a revolutionary okay, put like, guy. Okay, put like Vaughn. Vaughn was a gangster too. You don't think Vaughn was a gangster or he was playing too? I didn't know who King Vaughn was until uh, he got killed. Okay, but do, after you listen to his music, you think he was playing too? I don't. A nigga's music don't. Tell me that. Yeah. Mo three was a homie, right? Mm-hmm. He was a blood, wasn't he? Yeah. So I was listening to his music. People was, you know, I just when when they told me how it happened, if that's how it happened, I don't know. Something about on the freeway yeah, and yeah, chase boom yeah. boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, but this is what confused me. Mm. It wasn't no return fire. No, no, no. He couldn't get to it. He we got out the car. That see rain. Yeah. That confuses me why, too. Why? Why? Because it's never you can't get to it. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you this, and and a lot of that—that's the part right. from his music. Uh-huh. What the perception was to how it happened. You know how somebody's stuck in between, and you're trying to transition, knowing if you get pulled over, that's the end of your career. Then he was getting a little money, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have had his team with him. Nah, nah, nah. You can't, you can't, you can't take a team to go fuck some hoes. But why you can't? Man, nah, he spent the night over a bitch house. Okay, what's yeah, what's yeah, 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 I understand that, but what you mean? yeah, but nah, not more. Three. Worst, co- worst, worst come to worst, I'm rolling at eight in the morning, nigga. Be here. Yeah, nah. I'm rolling at eight in the morning. Be there seven thirty. Yeah, he ain't gonna let me let nobody know where he was at. Oh well, you know my team when yeah, I'm moving like yeah. that, I'm moving. There ain't no. And, and we gotta, we gotta, you gotta understand. This is a young dude that's just finally didn't know what type of position he was in. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you got to take it serious yeah. when it's serious. But now, nah, now, nah, let me tell you like this, man. He wasn't playing. But they said it. you did some shit too, though. Nah, that's some shit Charles White made up. What I don't tell me I took a gun out the car. Oh, you took his gun out that of the car? So White said. when he reached for it? Yeah, he was there, but people don't know. I'm not going to never say where he was at and how he was there and all that, but you know, at the end of the day. Rest in peace, yeah, Mo 3. But nah, he, but he wasn't gonna, no, I, doing I, no play. I, I fuck with Mo 3. I fuck with <laughs> his music, and Gazi loves him to death. Yeah. And I respect Gazi. So, you you know, do I, you respect Gazi? Yeah. yeah, you helped us though, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, what you I think about Bobby now? I thought you were gonna start having Bobby. I mean, Bobby called me. I do what he asked me uh-huh. to do. I've been told him back then. Yeah. I think Bobby had a shot, but uh, I, I, he got like <laughs> homeboy management. <laughs> oh, EJ. I don't know who it is, <laughs> yeah. but I just think yeah. he, I think he needs somebody else around him that can move some things. Man, this is just listens what I said from the get go. I don't want Kyle guys. You fuck with Bobby. I don't want Kyle guys and told Kyle guys to sign by it, but I said I, t- I listen. What happened to the other artists you had, like in the Carolinas or something? Baby, see? Somebody you was oh, yeah, telling I t- me about. I took them big over there to create and got them some money. and uh, yeah, create? But I cast, I mean, I, I, yeah, I took them to create. Uh, I got paid off that. But then, you know, it's an artist out there named uh, Bumpy Johnson, the AOF Key. Okay. Little step I'm working with. But uh, Bumpy Johnson, you're a big ex? 
No, say me uh, something more. Big X the plug. He ain't never heard Big X the plug. Uh, He's very you really Cali oriented. You heard of Shy Belligerent? Uh uh-uh. uh. See what I'm saying? Zoe Osama? Uh uh-uh. uh. See what I'm saying? Uh-uh. Paris Hilton? Big X the plug is like really Paris big. Paris Hilton? Yeah. Now she from the South. Uh-huh. Paris Hilton? She hot. Yeah. She from the South. She is hot. Not that Paris Hilton. We talking oh. about the black Paris Hill Tran. How about that? Hill Tran? Yeah, Hill Tran. She's trans? No, she's not trans. She's oh. a hard woman. Oh. Now, you don't like her. I'm going to send you her music. That's what you got? No, nah, I, I, I've just been working with her. Um, Stunner called me today. He going, <clears throat> you know, I took like nine months off, but he about to open up a bunch of budgets, so I got to go do a few projects. <laughs> them budgets. I love them budgets. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I, I, Rainwater. I love them Rainwater. Budgets. See, I'm a cool nigga. You don't think I'm a cool nigga? Yeah, but I fuck with you, Rain. <laughs> you thought I was gonna do something to you when I saw you. Uh, Tell the truth. They had you thinking that dumb shit. No, he said he wanted me to hey, pull, no, have you pull up. No, because niggas be my, saying nah, dumb shit. It, it was my mama, man. Your mama? Yeah. What's your mama name? Miss what? Uh, Willa. She was like. Miss Willa? Yeah. She heard us going back and forth. Yeah, my granny and everybody. Willa, oh, said, wow, yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, I still, I'm saying, my mama sit there and said. Granny Willa? <laughs> yeah. Miss Willa and Granny Willa, listen. You know what you gave birth to, and I'm just chilling with the homie. I ain't doing nothing. You know, you know the boy ain't right. <laughs> Why you say I ain't right? You you antagonizing. Antagonizing? Nah. You dangerous because you antagonize, but you really ain't what would come with it. Mama, mm-hmm. look at this. You remember this man on? Hey, hold, Miss Willa. Hold it up to the mic if you could. Hey, hey, Miss Willa. Huh? Let me see. From Clubhouse. Hey, Miss Willa. Oh, yes, I do. Hey, what'd how you, you doing? What'd you say about him? Did he tell you what he did to me, Miss Willa? Uh-uh, what'd he do? Miss Willa, I, I'm, a, I'm on TV, but he took my girlfriend, and I was really <laughs> in love with her, and he went and told her all these things that wasn't true, and then he kissed her, and she liked how he kissed, and then she uh-huh. came on Clubhouse and told me it was quits, Miss Willa. So I just got emotional. I, I didn't mean nothing by what I said to your baby boy. Oh, okay. Thank you. Because, boy, I was really hot. You ain't going to say nothing to him for me, Miss Willa, for taking my girlfriend? <laughs> I mean, that's wrong. He shouldn't have never did that. Tell him, Miss Willa. And then he yeah. antagonized me, talking about if you would have had hair, maybe you would have had a chance. Miss Will, I know you may not like this, but I hope all his hair fall out one day, Miss Will. Yeah, Mama, I gotta let you go. That man crazy. I take, I take pride in my hair. <laughs> Look, so try to sit your mom on me. You just, Somebody Photoshop whack with his haircut. You just, you just said, you just said something though to make me, make me understand. You just said, you said, he antagonizing, but then the, at least I allow, I outlast the gangsters. But at least, huh? at least, at least I outlast the gangsters. Let me say like this. So you in top competition with the gangsters? No, no, no. In, in that city right now, I've been nigga, nigga, I, nigga. In that city right now, since two thousand six, I've been, the, I've been the top person. Man, at the end of the day, what in Dallas? Dallas, yeah. At the end of the day, so, so, listen, listen. Uh, when, when you say you go call somebody, wait, I put this on all, I put the all my kids. Call them. Nah, I got my partner named uh, Ball. Man, call him. I just got the phone ball this morning. Now, that's yeah, yeah, man, man, listen, listen, listen. Well, so, you know, it, nigga, you yeah. ain't come on, bro. Cut that out. What? You probably call on ball. Ball on. Come I on, call bro. on ball. I'm bigger than ball. Call Get ball. The fuck out of here, bro. Yes, man. He's talking ball? about the pit. Man, listen. I ain't gonna, man, man, listen. Whack, listen. What? Listen, whack, 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 whack. No disrespect to nobody. Ball part of the J. Prisoner movement. What's, what's that called? Nah, ball like? by itself. You got to tell now. Listen. He lived like out the way, like down south a little bit. Man, you got to see me. Like 20 Lake acres. That's big. That's Lake Red. That's where, that's where I used to throw all the you parties. You got a nice crib over there. I, I used to throw high school parties in them houses. I used to trash them houses. So, Rain, what can we do? Why, why, why haven't you put together a Chitlin Circuit tour so we can... It might work for what we want to do for the independent artists because we about to do No Jumper, fire up the music department. So oh, yeah, why won't you put together the Chitlin Circuit 10, 15 stops that we can do on up-and-coming artists? Yeah, come on, we'll, we'll make some good money. Oh, let's make that happen. Oh, so, so basically you're saying you'll do a tour so we might hit Lil Rock. Whatever. And then do our independent artists. Yeah. Get about 100 people. We're going to pump it on No Jumper, yep. let them know they come and get them going. Yeah. How many tickets could Blueface sell in Dallas? Blueface and both his baby mamas. Okay, now you're asking a lot. What about just one? What about Jaden? No, 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 no. Blueface and both his baby mamas was like two, Yo, you see the two to three show, thousand. That's a different type of check. You huh? see the new show? Look, we got a show coming to Zeus, and we got 
the the um Bad Girls Club, the Blue Girls Club coming to the mm-hmm. Tronics Network, Ray J Network. We got eighty unseen net um 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 shows that never was seen. We launched on you know we and Ray got a a network too. But you couldn't bring him and Baby Mamas on tour. Oh. I just saw somebody that I'm glad you're here though because I paid a deposit today. What? Blue face and birth, both his baby mamas. How much is that gonna cost? I fuck with Jade. You know, yeah, she's rock, a little more reliable. You know what? I can say this. I don't like the shit, the slick shit Rock does. Around me, she's you know, she's pretty cool. She listens to me. It's just the slick shit she does. Like she ain't, it's no loyalty. She she don't have no no limit to what she would do to a motherfucker that she's supposed to be good with. Mm. But I can't, you know, that's digging pussy shit I don't. But that'll be a bad mother. I'll pay 50000 I'll give y'all 25000 before we leave. That'll be a badass man. That'll sit there. We get fifty for Blue and Jade. <sighs> and like Utah markets. We talking about Dallas. That's yeah, but nigga, that's a whole lot bigger. Shit, we can know. discuss it, but put the, put together that situation. Yeah. And me and Adam can tap into you and it'll flow over. Yeah, but 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 what y'all doing is perfect though. At the end of the day, because you know, yeah, for all the independent artists, you know, we got the Hunter Studios just around the corner, so we got all the booths and everything over, so we can start it there. And oh, it's around the corner. Yeah, y'all got anybody on I can pay for? Who all up there? Anybody? It's my, my yeah. en- you know, uh, my, yeah. my engineers and shit. Okay. You need a studio? You can go. Over. I thought you was in Vegas. No, not what you mean. I thought you stayed in Vegas. You're thinking of Keefe D? No, he told me one time I was at Boosie Club and he was like. I was in Vegas. Yeah, he was in Vegas. Yeah, we got a spot in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice crib in, in Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got yeah. one of the one of the um, Tronics houses in Vegas. Yeah, I just had triplets in Vegas. He's got bunk beds in Floyd hey, Mayweather's house. Vegas. You got kids, babies? How, how old are the babies? They one years old. Baby mama from Vegas. What size diapers they in? Five. Oh boy. You, I already, you already told me what you. Yeah, I got some fives. Yeah, okay, Let me know where to send them. Yeah. I got a slogan for you. What up? Incredibles diapers for kids who take incredible shits. <laughs> Hey, yo, you always say some weird old white people. Okay, shit. alternate for kids who take incredible doo doos. A bit more brand safe. Yo, man. I still um, keep thinking about turning you into Blippy. Like a children's you can do entertainer. It. I can't do it. You can do it. No, a you. Whack 100. No, but that's why it's so funny. You know what I'm transitioning to, right? What? To whack a woman. 1,000. <laughs> You'll go to 1,000. Yeah, I'm going to one. I'm adding a zero. So you not so 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 we standing here now. No more gangster shit from you. So y'all y'all can talk gangster shit. Listen, y'all can talk crazy to this man. I adjust and you get the shit slapped out. Of you. <laughs> That's what I told him when we first started doing this. No, I was bro, like, you, you cannot bring this. any gangster shit into this business. And he I said, I don't bring gangster shit into business. Yeah. And it sounded a little bro, gangster the way he was yelling at me. I was raised yeah. a certain way, mm-hmm. bro. I'm I'm really a bougie nigga. I, I ain't had a sidewalk front in my house in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, not for real, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, my kids be proper etiquette. I'm ne- my son, 29, I never heard him use a uh, cuss word. Not to say he doesn't, I just don't hear it. Right, so I'm not like, like, the ghetto makes me cringe. Yeah, for real. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It does. So when I say I represent the bitch-ass niggas, I'm, you understand what I'm saying, mm-hmm. right? It's mm-hmm. been a change. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, the real niggas was that. It was the people the rappers looked up to. Mm-hmm. Remember when the rappers looked up to the but street see, niggas? But see, you can't call every rapper a real nigga. Hold on, hold on, no, no. <clears throat> the rappers looked up to the real niggas. Mm-hmm. They was under the real niggas. Mm-hmm. They wanted to be like them, right? Mm-hmm. Example. Dude just did 10 years. Mm-hmm. Dude pull up. Hey, man, give me a ride to the store. Give a real nigga a ride to the store. Cool. Yeah, man, nigga just did 10 years. I'm out here, I'm outside, pushing my line, I'm on swollen and shit, on my real nigga shit, get to the store. Hey, man, loan a real nigga 20 hours so I can get me something to drink. Mm-hmm. So we come out, crack his drink on the way back to the park. Yeah, nigga, real nigga out here doing his thing, my nigga. Yo, what's up with that nigga Whack? All that bitch-ass nigga in Europe. What's up with that nigga Rainwater? All that bitch-ass nigga on tour. Mm-hmm. Listen, my nigga, fuck with a real nigga. I'm at my mama house. Mm. So the real niggas is really the broke niggas now. Exactly. The bitch ass niggas, uh-huh. as they refer uh-huh. to it, is niggas is getting to the bag and uh-huh. handling their business. Uh-huh. This is just so, you know, back in 2016, if you go to my Instagram, I started hashtagging BAN. I represent the bitch ass niggas because mm. the real niggas is broke. 
Yeah. It's, so that's why I wanted you to call a real nigga. <laughs> exactly. Yellow ain't broke. <laughs> I ain't never call him broke. He ain't broke. I ain't never call him broke. He ain't broke. But listen, listen, last time I seen a rapper, you know what I did? Bitch ass nigga fight. I had him run down the street. Bitch ass nigga. You had who running down the street? Talking about Trap, Trap Boy Freddy. Who? Mm. Is that the nigga I just Was saw? Was he running? Hey, is that the dude I just saw? Wait, no, that's a dude. Yeah, man, don't kick nobody. They, they, they best friends. He's know? locked up right now, but. You uh, had Trap Boy Freddy running out I mean, he was, a, he, he he was a boy in the situation, yeah. Listen, 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 at the end of the day, I was raised on the. Or did, you, or did you pay the nigga to do nah, this? Nah, I ain't pay nobody to do Charleston that. told me you'd be paying Man, I ain't. Kids. I, nigga, I'm too cheap. Nigga, I'm cut, though. We know that. I'm cut, though. I'm cheap as we fuck. So at the end of the day, and I ain't cut, though. Uh, nigga, I would let a person know what I'm going to do and how to do it. Like straight up, if you agree, if you if you agree to something I don't told you, then how in the hell I'm a ground? For real, running? Where's the fucking screen? Like y'all are slipping. <laughs> the crew is slipping. You have, you like, we used to have a screen where Adam would take a little mouse. No, but they're watching it out there, so we can't have it on here. Holla, my man Lewis. See how you can do it in both spots. We should work on that. That's a good point. Gee whiz. Yeah, so you know, sometimes I don't I don't know who the real nigga. Where he at? Oh, he, he way over there. That's Trap Boy Freddy. Where? In the yellow? Mm hmm Who's that in the pink shorts? That's Mo3 Cousin. Oh. So where are you in all this? I thought you were the pink he shorts. He ain't doing shit. Uh, uh. He's right <laughs> while he ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Look, I, I, it's Trap Boy Freddy. See, this ain't, this ain't back Clubhouse. Right while he can't talk that shit on Clubhouse. Man, listen. You was lying. No, 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 listen, listen, listen. Ray White, listen, 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 listen. I seen him. Listen, listen, I seen him. I got him. You I got, what? You listen, ain't no, 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 listen. I seen him from the, no, his pot was getting beat up. I seen him from the get go and said, damn, bro, we gonna pass each other and I see each other. We ain't say nothing to each other. I know we see each other right here. Why we gonna pass each other? You ain't gonna say nothing. We see, we right here. Let me ask you a question, see if you gonna keep it real. What? You think Bootsy out of line filing criminal charges against his brother? Not the civil, the criminal. Mm, that why he, ooh, that's why he say we're in that clubhouse now. <laughs> <laughs> man, let me tell you, man. Do let me you tell think you. he's out of line for filing criminal charges, the street nigga, against his brother? If it was civil, I wouldn't have nothing nah, to say. Nah, and I fuck with yeah, Bootsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, let me tell you. On that situation, I don't know how that situation went. No, no, fuck that. He filed criminal charges. Not on criminal. His I, I thought he sued him. No, criminal. Anything civil he filed, he's well in his right. I don't give a fuck about. Right? Because his brother's a civilian, and you got to play with civilians like that. But Bootsy filed criminal charges on his brother. Do you think he was out of line? If it's criminal charges, yes. Okay. This other dude. What's this dude? Try Boy Freddy? No, the yellow nigga. Oh, Yellow mm -hmm. Beezy? Mm -hmm. No, the other one. That's the homie. King Yellow. King Yellow. Oh, King okay, yellow. you're talking about that, yeah. <clears throat> Do you think he's out of line for confirming things with law enforcement? That the gun, he's a street nigga. That the gun was in his, his, his uh... No, that no. nigga said, they were asking yeah, him, he is, a GD, it, it, yeah. he a blood, he a this, he a that. But I don't know the street nigga rules. You are never supposed to <sighs> confirm nothing. Uh -huh. With law enforcement. Yeah, I don't know the street nigga, nigga rules. You tell me, Rain Water live in Dallas? I don't know. Rain Water girlfriend named Michelle? So, so basically, it's a lot of street niggas that's really not street. I don't believe a lot of these people. It's a violation. Uh, so, what happened when they get violated? I don't see the old rules per big U is if you expose a person, you're supposed to do something to them. Listen, Whack 100 got a voice. Okay? Mm -hmm. We changing the rules. What's the rules now? We have a new department. Uh -huh. <clears throat> We're called the exposers. All we doing is exposing. Yeah, because people don't care. Maybe we want to laugh at you. Maybe we're giving somebody warning that's doing business with you that shouldn't. And he said, oh, that's you. Maybe somebody want to do something to you. That ain't our business. All we're doing is exposing. We come to your house. We say, hey. The rats are on this wall, or on this closet. Now, if you open that wall up and that closet up, whatever you want to do with the rat so, is your business. So, so, boom. <clears throat> so, what you say about the street dudes are still hanging with the rats? Then you know that's what that is. No, nah, they, they don't get violated. That's what that is. If they know. If they know, they don't get violated. They're supposed to. So what's go so like like so the really the real street rules don't occur no the more. The streets is a myth. Yeah, I know it. You know Troy Ave got that shit for me, right? Uh, yeah. 
Nah, he didn't. I just be trolling. But the streets is a I was bit. thinking that. I'm like, you really trying to take credit for that? Why well, maybe that? I would, white guy. <laughs> Y'all took credit for building America, and you know goddamn well you didn't. I wasn't there. So, you, you ever hear that like, you shouldn't be judged by the sins of your father? Bullshit. Apply that to the white race. Thank uh, you. Captain Tazariot <laughs> and the Hebrew Israelite says you should pay for your father's sins. Kiss the goddamn boot. You seen them do this shit right. <laughs> I ain't Nancy Pelosi. I ain't kissing no boots. I don't what? care how cool their kufi looks. I ain't. They I ain't, don't wear kufi. I can't smooch the boots. You didn't see them another day on, on uh, Instagram? Who? 500 deep. Who? One West. Marching all black brother strength. One West was that? So. One West. Uh, Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. ISU. Um, ISU P. Something. ISU. I can't hear yes. ISU P. Blank. Yeah. I can't say it because. I'm a power rule. We don't put that alphabet out to people. Why is you can't still, say, make question, why are you still claiming the shit? I don't claim nothing, nigga. I'm not right. no fucking claimer. Right. It all so the what, time. So I'm you, part of that foundation. That'd never go Is that a way. street out here? Power was a street in, 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 in Pompton. I know some bitch ass niggas claim power rule down south. And, and, oh, and, yeah, okay. I'm glad and, you put and, it down south. Listen, yeah. we gotta, I, no, we no, gotta no, find no. All over the world. I know they, they, they claim the gangs all over know. the world for protection. And right now it's like a myth right now because, like. What have I always said? Yeah. I don't politic anything has anything to do with a cripple of blood once I leave the West Coast. Yeah. Ever? Never. People are claiming a street that they never even. They see how many Hoovers down south. They, they ain't never seen the street Hoover. Yeah. Because he, he a, put Tony Woodrich on. That's a lot. Uh, <laughs> he don't know who Tony is. I said that. <laughs> nigga hated on me. He hated on you how? Yeah. I don't know. I guess. Now that was his manager. That's the, the gay the, yeah. um, bisexual. Oh, and he killed his career. He, he killed thinks I dream. killed his career by getting killed, him to drop his flag. Yeah, he killed his dream. I mean, when you going to put out the um, little session you had with him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right that <laughs> that's the big fee that's uh, my great finale for my porn career Yo. drop the Tony Woolrich tape <laughs> um Adam yeah what was the reason for interviewing Rain Water how did he get on your radar did he call you I think Laura just asked me do you want to interview Rainwater? I said yes yeah. Uh, you call somebody? Uh, I inboxed him. Did you so you requested him? the interview? Yeah, see, he brought my name up. in the. Yeah, we were uh, talking about the Trapper for yeah, thing. It happened. But he ain't chasing. So you up here on false pretense. A nigga with pink shorts up to his thighs chasing. Nah, I did my thing. Trap Boy Freddy, I don't know you. Yeah. But the only bad thing I see about that is you ran from a nigga in pink shorts, high pink shorts that stopped right here. If a nigga would have had on regular clothes, I wouldn't hold it against you. <laughs> Why you say that, man? You listen, listen the shorts? a lot of rappers, let me tell you this. You know how I many rappers sit there, you know how I many rappers sit there and believe, I mean, fans sit there and believe a rapper and crashed out over a rapper? Uh, and crashed yeah, out because of beef they don't have to do it? All my rappers are for real. I understand that. All my rappers are for all real. My but it, listen, I don't like the. I don't Ray, like, Ray J included. Yeah. I just don't like the simple fact that, you know, some people would, would have this, 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 image and this energy in a city where they not even like that. You know, I'm going to stand for something. You know, at the end of the day, when it comes down to fighting, I was I was raised in the same neighborhood Earl Spence. Earl Spence my little partner. You know, at the end of the day, we the did that. No, 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 I understand, I understand it. So we did that. We did, that's what we did where the neighborhood we ran, we came from. When it comes down to guns, I didn't meet the gun world until I met Mo3, but when it comes down to fighting and jumping, then, that's what we did our whole life growing up. 2000, 2000, from the 2006 to 2013, it might have been 30 niggas, and we lucky if one person had a deuce deuce in their pocket. So when it comes down to getting jumped and beat up and doing all of this, that's what I did. But when I met Mo3 and you come around with these guns. Oh, yeah, you, I ain't know nothing about that. I never had to ride with no gun or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? When I met Mo3, it was serious. So when it comes down to fight, I'm not worried about none of that at all. Oh, my biggest fear is getting shot again. Oh, yeah, you being shot? Yeah. Where you got hit at? In my, uh, in my leg and my lower back. What did uh, Miss Wilma say about that? Oh, she was, uh, she was devastated. Her lower back is dangerous. Yeah. How close was it to your spine? Uh, it went, it went. Through the, through the side. Gotcha. What'd you get hit with, nine or something? Mm, 380. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? My partner next to me, he got hit five times, protecting me. He jumped in front of you. He was in the car, we was asleep. Oh. So, you know, that's my so big what'd spirit. what'd you do? Huh? I bowed up and, and, and so What did you do? Some, you did uh, something. No, I didn't know. Owe somebody some money? No, nah, they tried to rob me. I always threw, after one of my parties, I always threw parties. Oh, so you had the money on you? Uh-huh. Oh, gotcha. I was sleeping in the car because I didn't want to buy a hotel for everybody. See, 
See what being stingy did? That one, yeah, 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 yeah. So you didn't buy hotels for nobody? No, he's he agreed, man. I said, I'm gonna give your money. He agreed. We don't need no hotel. We'll go to sleep and wake up at seven in the morning, pass our flies and leave. Oh, okay. And you know, and you know I got and I got shot, but you know, uh, I ain't never telling nobody. You didn't tell? Mm-mm. You knew who did it? Never to this day. But you knew who did it? Mm-hmm. Oh well, shit! You kept it real. Uh-huh. I mean, you gotta be a street nigga. See, that I that's why. They, that's why. They, that's why they said that you did watch out. I was giving you a good example right there. Yeah, yeah man. he learned that shit from Vlad. Yeah, Vlad over the office. Hey, I asked a question. You don't have to answer. Yeah. So it's a different from somebody who's a man. I rob by myself. I rob by myself every time. No, I can, it's a chance. I come out here get jacked anything. I know what I done said and did to people and what I do. I rob by myself. Nigga, you know where you was coming. When. You know you coming to safe zone over here. No. No, they told me last night, say cheese and uh J Man assistants looked at me in my face and said, Your car might get broken too. That was on Melrose. Oh, okay. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's Hollywood. Nobody's yeah. got their car broken into over here. Yeah, so no. I never knew where we were coming, but we in the at valley. the end I put this on my kids. I, I stand I stand for some of that, but no, I'm a man. I'm a man, hundred percent. That's one thing I do like about Charles and White. Charles and White is a man. I, we went places, me and him. When I was cool with him, he looked me in my eye, and I looked in my eye. If something go down, we go out to die in this hole together. Let me ask you this: If you're running in to grab a burger, do you leave your backpack in the back seat of the car? No, nah, yeah, nah. hell no. <laughs> yeah, you put that in the trunk, or you bring it into the f- shit with you. How you get your whoops though? I thought That's you were from saying. Chicago. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. Where did he get his? Where did he get? Because they parked their cars in the back on Melrose, and uh-huh. within like ten minutes, some jack boys with masks came on and they bit the shit, broke into the car, took the the bags. They got a camera and they got a laptop, which sucks. But also, why the fuck are you leaving a camera and a laptop in plain view in a touristy ass area of L.A.? You, you there's people who do this for a living in the car nowhere. Mm. Nothing. You do a Christmas shop, but ain't no. Put that in the trunk, go to the next spot. You better take that shit home. Mm-hmm. And even when you take that shit home, they coming in there too. Mm-hmm. I feel like the trunk is pretty safe compared to the back seat. Bro, the best thing to give out now is just money. What you, you mean? Nigga, look, you're going to spend 5000 somebody just give them the 5000 Yeah. It's kind of, there's no thought. I can't lose no more. It's not romantic. I ain't, I ain't, listen, I ain't bring no backpack, no charger, no keys. I just got on the plane like this. Don't think leave on the plane like this. Ain't nobody tripping, you, you know. You know, nephew ain't got the thing on you, man. He ain't tripping. Who ain't got the thing on? Who? You? Him? What'd you say this? Nephew ain't got the thing on. He ain't tripping. Uh. So did y'all is that lawsuit done? Nah. Uh uh-uh. You gonna drop it? Uh show me something. Huh? Uh uh-uh. uh, show me something. Something on it, something? I said show me something. Uh uh-uh. uh. How, how much is a lawsuit for? Mm, it's up a there. A million five hundred? It's up there now. More than that? Uh uh-huh. You don't wanna settle? I ain't man, you know, he reached out a couple times. But niggas stop back like a look. What the fuck is the problem? Settle. Y'all, he did something. Y'all did something. Settle, nigga. Mm. But you want to lead the people in the middle of it? What people you in the middle? Up, nigga, you going to fuck around and run up attorney fees to a point to where you could have had that. Yeah, yeah. Now, nah, you know, I'm standing on something. I got, I got. What you mean, nigga, if he want to settle? I don't think he want I don't know. He, I don't know. They called, he called talking about meet him at the police station the other day. <laughs> Come on, bro. You ain't got Yellow BZ said meet me at no, the police station. Yeah, man, man, I, I put it on my we, kids. We ain't doing that. Man, I put Because he wanted to kids. negotiate? We're not man, doing that. I don't know what he did. They said they want, he said. <clears> go, you ain't got the contact. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I make a phone call. He sit there and say, I make, man, I make a phone call right now. He sit there and said, I got this phone call three times. Man, we go well, meet in the safe spot, meet us at the police station. We gotta have a conversation. I got, man, I got. But well, that's for you. For me. They meet you anyway. Uh, he just trying to let you know. I need, matter of fact, matter of fact, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm gonna look in your eye. I'm gonna look in your eye. This is what we need to do. I'm gonna fly you out there. You hear me? When y'all do that, I want you to put me in a room with anybody that you think I don't need to be in a room with. Just me, you, and them. And at the end of the day, we need to do this for the kids in the situation because there's too much bullshit going on, too many lives. Yeah, that, but listen, yeah. uh, we talk about why no, you No, 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 we ain't talking about it. no money. I'm talking about I ain't no money got to do with that. I'm talking about me, you, and whoever so we can get so this. So once that happens, you'll drop you the know, suit? I'm just saying me, you, and, and, and anybody else. When you'll drop the I'm suit? I'm just saying me, you, and anybody else, we're going to meet. So you don't want to drop and the man, suit? And then we're going to meet. Come on, man. And we're going to meet. So you pretty much identify BZ. Mm-mm. You, you had to to put him in the suit. He invited himself. How? I did it. I beat him up. Huh? I beat him up. That's what he said. So you turned in the video. No, it, it was over where. No. You put it. I put that on my kids. He put insurance on himself. On, on, on himself because he went back to the video after everything happened. You ran back to the video. Said I beat him up. 
by myself. I beat him up. And you and took it and filed. No, 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 no. You no, had to file. No, 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 listen, listen. When he said that, nothing ever, we, we, we the best of friends. Nothing happened. Yeah, I'm, 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 man, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. So yeah. you filed. Yeah, yeah. I can't, ain't nothing else, ain't nothing else done. I said and so done. So you pulled a 40 Glock. I ain't pulled no 40 Glock. She did. Because you got to get on the stand and point him out. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. She did. You're a fucking liar. You do. Mm. I seen it because I was in, in game shit. Mm -hmm. They're going to ask you to point, identify the dude. Do you see the guy in court that beat you up? And you're going to have to point him out. So is that Kyle Snitching or Kyle? What's Kyle? I mean, yeah, that's telling at that point. That's telling. Oh, so, but, oh, so, if you just had a, a, a thing, <sighs> what was that? Whatever, whatever, you ain't doing Oh, it's that. a lawsuit. Yeah, it's a lawsuit. It's not no criminal. Yeah, so, won't, but won't you settle mm -hmm. so you ain't got to go on record getting on stands pointing niggas out? That's snitching. That's telling. Hello. <laughs> Someone just uh, came in. DW Flames says it's snitching. Uh, that's telling. That's, telling. that's our LA I'm, representative. I'm telling, listen, yeah. all bullshit beat. aside, I set in on bro shit. Mm -hmm. In these situations, that's assault style civil suits. You have to get on the stand. They're going to ask you, the judge is going to ask you, can you identify the the guy that did this to you? You're going to have to point him out. Yeah, yeah. So, what so what I'm telling you, yeah. why we just don't settle out yeah, of yeah, court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Won't you just fly down there and then we try to make something happen? Then you're going to drop the suit? I let, let's just fly down there and try to make something happen. You stop asking me that damn question. Just fly down there and ask the question. No, bro. Yeah, I'm just saying, I mean, though. if you will drop the suit, I'm just saying, now, nah, I'm just, I'm nephew what? I'm just saying, you fly down there and let's make something happen. We need to be in the same room. Who, you and him? Yeah, me, you, and him. To have a discussion? Man, whatever we have. No, because then you file another I lawsuit. I ain't filing no. Oh, uh, no, no, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you put insurance on yourself. No camera's supposed to be involved. I ain't never seen a street nigga run back and tell a camera what he did. What if something would have happened to him two days later? Well, that's the, what you, he said he did that. I ain't never seen a street nigga run to a camera and say what he did. Okay, you getting away. No, have you? From what we talking have about. Have you? So you willing to take the stand and no, point, point he, him out? No, listen, he put that on He put that on his neighborhood. You said that listen, 10 minutes no, ago. No, no, listen, he put that on neighborhood crypt that I beat him up by myself and he they jump me. Listen. You brought your click up. So, are you willing to get on the stand and point him out? Are you willing to do that? For real, bro, like, because you don't seem like that type of nigga. This is why I'm saying settle. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying don't get your bag. But keep yourself from going on record like that. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But listen, just yo, come down. Now we just need our, you know. I mean, this is business, like yeah, no, I know, I, I, that's not. I can call and, and yeah, and well, set when up the and, camera get out, yeah. I'm why sure, didn't I, you meet him at the police station? Yeah, I'm gonna show you some. That's hey, just him saying. You I, had know, it's cool. I had yeah. tickets. I had tickets. I had tickets. I've been. I've been probably been messing with me like like dog kind of. You could have met him down there at Bay Bay spot. No, nah, no. Nah, see, 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 see. Let me tell you about Dallas. See, some people. Don't get involved in that situation, and they just stay neutral. I, I mean, me and baby had a lot. He neutral. Yeah, 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 me and baby know people. Only person that try to get involved in that situation to make it come to the end where we finna meet, and nobody else want to meet with Jay Prince. But he probably do. We fuck with Prince like that. Yeah, he be around Julian all the time. Has Jay so. Prince shown interest in the, the, trying to work the, on this problem? So why yeah, it the, happen? The, the, the senior did. The senior came to Mo Three House three or four times. They didn't want to meet up. Well, uh, that, that's what I wish. We, I've been screaming that for years. Put us in the same room. I put, I put that on all my kids. Because at the end of the day, the city divided, and I can make way more money if the city wasn't divided. You got all these little Oak Cliff kids over there that I can help get deals right now, and you got the North Dallas kids that I can help get deals right now, but at the end of the day, with these two individuals right there that making it seem like Oak Cliff can't fuck with North Dallas and North Dallas can't fuck with Oak Cliff, yeah, I need this shit to end because at the end of the day, since I was sick, when I was 17 years old, I ran the whole city when everything was equal. Everybody made money, so they had to call me for you deals. ain't never ran the whole shit Man, ask fucking them. fucking Dallas, nigga. Ask them. Fuck out of here, Man, listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen, the fuck is listen, you listen, about? listen, listen, listen. I ain't even from Dallas, but I'm listen, a cowboy listen, listen, listen. nigga, and I'm not letting you get that off. You might have been doing little parties. No, you no, 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 no. Put You're not capable of running nothing down. Hold on, whack, hold on. You ain't even a street hold nigga, whack, bro. Hold on, whack, man. I ain't now, no, ain't now one of them niggas down there street niggas. No, we ain't even seeing they ran it, but yeah, you yeah, did. Yeah, listen, listen, sister. Stank, you did hold on, hold on, hold on, whack, hold on. Whack, sister, stanky leg. When baby puts play and all that dance, all the, I caught the road right now. So you're talking about clubs. Clubs, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the music. Say I'm you. I'm talking about, no, 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 no. Nigga, I'm not going to let you do the Dallas niggas like that. Baby, baby, I mean, whack, I'm not talking about clubs. I was the one to help moving the music, taking it to the, this place. When I got locked up, everything so died. So you was a plug no, 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 for no, music. No, 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 that's what I'm talking about. I can't about. dispute that. No, no, that's what I'm talking about. I, I, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I need to get these two out the way yeah. because I, if if this side can connect with this side, 
I can make a shitload of money. They don't even got to connect. This dude. Nah, 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 nah. Everybody's scared to go to the club and scared to go outside. That's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, but I don't need it out there. Rap music your day is yeah, fucked yeah, up. I, the I, promoters I, is calling me saying, Whack, you got some R&B? Because people is tired of getting robbed and shot after the club. Yeah, I, I don't mm -hmm. need it out there. Because at the end of the day, yeah, I, I wanted to let it be known that I'm from their side of town. Like yeah, but you ain't part of their movement. Not, man, man, I started that. that man, listen, bro. Listen, you you, bro, listen, capping, listen, bro, listen, 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 listen. I, I can was, see in your listen, eyes. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, you are not prone to violence. Mm. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. That's listen. not true. Yeah, we ain't gonna talk I about ain't that. saying you won't yeah. fight. No, no, no. I'm not talking about no damn violence. Ain't no violence going on at the end of the day. Most How three, many times uh, a nigga just didn't slap the shit out of you? <laughs> Never. Fuck out of here. Only time I got beat up was with yellow beans. No, I didn't say beat up. Nah, slap, nah, slap the shit nah, out of you. hell no. Nah. We ain't talking about nah. everybody have to see, but you know what it is. Nah, nigga... nah, listen. I had enough sense to surround myself with this and that where I never had to go through that. <laughs> well, you went through it because you was on all fours. I, I ain't get shot. A nigga was I didn't get shot. Dallas Cowboy yeah, field goal. Yeah, I, and I, your, your, I seen a motherfucker. Your, I seen a motherfucker car flip about four times. Yeah, I, I, yeah. At the end of the day, so I ain't never get shot. I'm scared about getting shot. Yo, he's a, a more. He's Charleston White in a different form. Mm. He going to talk his shit. He can talk real fast. He going to articulate himself. And he knows how to dance and, <laughs> and get away from something he don't know how to talk about. I just know his movement, so I know how to keep his ass where I want him. But you're pretty good at what you do. But don't say you ran Dallas, nigga. man. I, the, music, the music, the music, the music. Yeah, the yeah, music. No. But look, but but it's a small I, area, right? Nah, That's man. big. Like, yeah, all nah. things considered, but, though. But it's hold like, on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. I'm a cowboy, nigga. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Ten and three. Wait, since I was a kid, I have dipped and dabbed at all the good, the hoods, you know, the this and that. I made money off the street, nigga, since I was a kid. And listen, I don't believe. And listen, I don't believe. I have listen, listen. I have seen most street niggas most scared. Area than a suburb niggas. Just straight up because a street nigga ain't finna fly to LA with no gun, with jewelry on, but at the end of the day, but you would find a suburb dude just say, man, any, anything that goes, I'm going, I'm going out there. I'm chasing. That's why most, that's why most B and A's <clears throat> is richer than the street niggas because the street niggas are scary. Straight up. That's why most people are. are, are this what we gonna do, right? Huh? You not a street nigga. Hell no, they die. <laughs> Huh. They die. So you're going to keep street nigga shit out your mouth because you try to belittle niggas from the streets. And you talking to a street nigga. Nah, you just said you want a street nigga. Oh, no, I said I'm about a game man. Yeah, a game man, yeah, yeah. I'm still, yeah. you know, I'm, uh -huh. I'm, you're not a street nigga. Nah, hell no. Nah. You couldn't last 45 seconds Where? in the midst of some street politics. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right. I'll get out of there. Yeah, I got it. Listen, listen let, let, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You, you a hustler. No, no, no. I understand that, but let me tell you And this. a nigga respect yeah, you being a yeah, hustler. Let me tell you this. You know who was a hustler and wasn't a street nigga? Who? One of our great freeway rich. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you a question. One of our great. Let me ask you a question. So a look. Hustler. Nothing wrong with have you ever Have you ever went to a club? Most managers are more streeter than the rappers. I ain't going to lie to you. No. No. The, the, the road managers? Yo, yeah, they say yes. No, I don't. Bro. That's where I'm one of a kind. Mm -hmm. And you see it. Mm -hmm. Martyrs go to jail, whack in court. Yeah. <clears throat> whack down so in the court. I'm hands on. So let me ask a question. A lot hey, of you management ever, companies, they yeah, like. Yeah, but have you ever had to get out the car and go get a back end? When you know the motherfuckers ain't even got the back end? Yeah, 10 uh, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then you got the whole club knowing they might be Crips and Bloods and politics here. But this the end of the day, you gotta stand like a man and sit there and count the money but for people that you know that we try to rob y'all. Yeah, yeah. Enough. So at the end of the day, it ain't not be no street nigga, but it's just a grown man. That's business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, so, that's so, always kind of fascinated me. Yeah, the managers yes, gotta be yeah, yeah, the, 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 the managers gotta because the artists they gotta walk around with a hundred niggas. But a manager gotta go in the back room and count that money with a bunch of guns on there, knowing that knowing that you might not make it out of here. Don't let the whole club. That's one, cap. The promoter doing one, business. Nigga, nigga, one time he the, need the artists to come in so he no, can no, make no, his no, money no, back. No, 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 no. One time, one time, one time the whole, one time the whole bro. club folded on Mo three and somebody died. You hear me? And I'm in the. You think that started with Mo three? No, 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 no. It started a lot of people. Like it's all a lot of people, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, sometimes people are are tricked because they believe that a lot of rappers or street niggas, or a lot of street niggas are really street niggas. I look at rappers first and foremost as entertainers. Right. Now there's some rappers that are street niggas. Right. For instance, 
Who Ice, rapper? Who Ice the, Cube would tell you, uh -huh. I started this gangster shit. Right. He's not talking about the streets. Right. He's talking about the art of gangster rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And I champion Cube, uh -huh. right, for being a great reporter of the streets and never going to jail uh -huh. and being successful as he's been, uh -huh. right, based on the hustle of the street. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Even his movies, you know what? In jail got, right now, most street niggas don't snitch. Nigga, it's niggas telling everywhere. You're not finna, but in you're not finna I, get me. <laughs> listen, you're not finna get me to argue do street niggas tell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they tell. But 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 at the end of the day, let me tell you like this. Uh that street shit is a myth. I watch I watch I no, watch the streets today are a myth. Yeah, I, yo, that, but they are very real. That, but that's why I live in. I'm talking about today's time. You know no, they're very real today. Yeah, yeah, but now nah, it's a myth to me. No. In certain it's situations, the parts yeah. If you went in. Yeah. And I told him he coming and strip him. They're going to strip him. Yeah, I believe that. Because I'm going to be a dumb ass take my ass over there to them damn parts. So don't go to talk yeah, about shit yeah, in the yeah, MIPS, yeah, especially yeah, not out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Paul Rue Crip and yeah, blood yeah. shit is for real. Uh, yeah. This South Side SA shit is for real. Yeah. This this Asian shit is for real. Mm -hmm. it, this shit for real. But I, Take your ass to at least leave here at this time of night uh -huh. and go to East LA walking to Lisa Village. Watch what happens. I believe you. That's a neighborhood. But I'm saying at the end of the day, in the in the world that I live in, in the street niggas I, in, that I live in, in the street niggas that people see and kids see, people on t kids don't see them type of street niggas on t television or Instagram. No. It's it's definitely done a 360. Yeah, yeah. So 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 right the now street nigga look up to the rapper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So right now when you talk about streets, we talking about in today's time. So 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 that's why I represent the bitch. Yeah, yeah. Niggas. So so exactly. So now you don't the switch. The real niggas you ain't don't, winning. Adam, you don't switch four times. No, I ain't never switched once. <laughs> you told me I am a street, real street nigga. No, I'm, I'm yeah, street. yeah, yeah. I understand that. Thirty four yeah, years yeah. though. How old are you? Uh, I'm thirty two. I got two more years longer than you've been living in the streets. Yeah, so like I said, the streets is a myth now. What they were, what they used to be, based upon what it is today, yes, yeah, definitely. You, yeah, different. I know it. So at the end of, but not everywhere. At the end of the day. so in some place so, you will go to that. Hey, y'all, look, I'm glad y'all seen this. I done won this argument with Wack. Wack done went around the table, <laughs> then it came back to what you I just said. <laughs> no, I prohibited you <laughs> from speaking on the streets the way you tried to. Now, it, 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 listen, the, today's streets is you no... You heard what that little youngster D.W. Flame came in here and did? What? Because he a street nigga. What'd he do? That's telling. What'd he do? What'd he do? If you get on that stand in the civil court... And mm -hmm. point that finger. I ain't no street music. nigga. That's tough. I ain't no street nigga. Are you saying you gonna do it? I, I, I nigga, I ain't no street nigga. Are you gonna point the finger? I don't. I ain't no street nigga. Are you gonna point the finger? If, if I, 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 I yeah, ain't no street nigga. I ain't no street nigga. So, so, so Are you gonna yes or no? Man, you dancing? I ain't dancing. Any other time, else I ask you a question, you answer. Yeah. Are you gonna? Will you point the finger when it comes down to it at Yellow Beezy? Yeah. There you go. So let me ask you a question. I still think we need to negotiate. <laughs> yeah, we need to come to Dallas. Nah, for real. Are you, are you gonna come to Dallas? Your work? I mean, ain't no problem coming to Dallas. I'm saying, uh, let's negotiate. Like, bro, like, what you want to do? Like, yeah, I don't you know. that salty? He's going to be hitting up some diaper oh, man, vendors. They, I mean, he just got kicked in the ass, bro. It ain't that bad. Yeah, man, certain thing would happen to him. Then there was a lot of other shit going on this shit. We so, you know, know yeah, man, listen, listen. You man, see listen. your ass hollering yeah, at the moon yeah, yeah, yeah. like a coyote, nigga. Uh, man, I Shout out listen, to the coyote. Listen, listen, I survived that day. It was, I dodged the Ricky bullet. Ricky and Guap, huh? I dodged the bullet. I survived that day. Yeah, but you got, boy, that shit was... We clowned your ass on Clubhouse with that shit. Man, you I was, ran out that room so fast. I was scared for my life. Put the motherfucking clip up top. He said, "Is that you?" Yeah, yeah, nah, I was scared. I was scared for my life because people you getting was shot. Scared for shit. Yeah, people getting shot left and right out there. Come on, bro. You you, you, you ain't got to work with. You your don't think I was scared? Here. Nope. What you think I was? Why you think I ran if I wasn't scared? No, huh? Why you think if I ran I wasn't scared? You didn't. I mean, maybe you were just going for your nightly jog. Nigga, <laughs> right. Take a weird time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, man, I was terrified, man. People, them proper's getting shot out there, man. That's everywhere. Yeah, but so shit. what you got up next, bro? Bumpy Johnson. Bumpy Johnson. Mm -hmm. What's it that OG Bumpy Johnson? Nah, TTOD. What does that mean? TTOD. Uh, some, some the, I don't know, some the click. OG you show Bobby artists. Are you know what the fuck it mean? Yeah. TTOD Bumpy Johnson. Uh -huh. AOF key too. You know, listen right now. You oh, know, there you go right there. Yeah, you know, right now I'm selling skin. Okay, you, you saw slang and iron. Yes, uh, yeah, gotta... we're doing that. Yeah, <laughs> we're slanging iron. Right, you know, right, right, whack. You know, I'm sitting on this side of the 
That's right. I know it's totally weird. Yeah. I'm talking to the back of your head, <laughs> looking at your neck rolls. Yeah. <laughs> but this was good. I got to catch my flight. <laughs> you do a chest fly into me. You out? Yeah, yeah I what's go. up? All right. I, the homie, we did a great interview. Let's go, gang. Let's go, gang. in the building. This bust ass nigga from your city ain't gonna shout you out. But Skull Gang is in the build. See, what type of nigga is I you, I already bro? shouted him out. You ain't shouted out shit. Yeah, I already shouted Skull him out. Skull Gang in the build, my nigga. Score Gang. Did he do, Skull be, gang. Did, did he do good business with you? Yeah, we did a great um, interview. Yeah. I, I gave nigga no, no, <laughs> no limits. We didn't, uh, you know, we didn't even go live, though. We did a pre-recorded. Yeah. He was another country. I had to do it at noon. I'm a night Yeah, guy. I don't know where I was at. You know, I'd be moving around. Yeah, what's his name? He was, in, uh, <laughs> he was with DDG and them niggas. It was some kind of, it was uh, Rowan Loud. I'm gone. I got to go with San Francisco. Oh, Thailand. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you so much, Doc. For real. Hey. We talked about three hours. Hey, everybody check out the next episode of the Adam and Wax Show featuring DW Flame. We're about to film it right now. We're about to film it right now. Right now. Dina! Massive, massive thanks to Rainwater. That was an amazing interview. Basically, two halves of it. Normal fucking conversation with me and him, and then the whack show. Hey, can we take a picture real quick? No jumper. We out. Like that. Click the like button.